It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. <laughs> Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% off your first purchase. Let's start the show. Big Wax is here. Yeah. Fresh off a of, uh, live Bully and the Beast podcast. Yes, bro. Yo. How really was it, man? It's dope, man. Sold out. Um, I thought I was going to get the jitteries more. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, how do Schultz and them go up I here mean, and like, actually do this? Half of the water is on your shirt. <laughs> this is it, it's hilarious. He does that every was, time. Uh, were you in a wide <laughs> shot for when that happened? <laughs> That was so impressive. <laughs> Dude, that was... Ah, you were looking I think at y'all did that on purpose, no, man. No, no. My shit was loose. Oh, it's here, the bottle. The, <laughs> <laughs> you were paying full attention to him as half the water was cascading down your shirt. <laughs> was like that was this. so impressive. That was so impressive. Okay, tell us about yeah, your show. You said you really thought you were going to get the jitteries? I was going to get sure. like really like the butterflies, like when I used to play yeah. football and stuff like that. Yeah. It was cool. It was all right. Yeah. I'm saying I wasn't as nervous. I guess if I was up there by myself, I probably would have, but... How many times did Taylor come on stage? Answer the important question. How um, many times did she, T. Diddy, T. Diddy get all up in the video? Um, huh? she, she definitely had the emails. Everybody said, um, what's up, T. Diddy? She got to make sure she have that. Uh, she didn't have a segment like me and her, so I lost some money. Oh, hold on. Um, when she was reading emails and every email she said started off, what's up, Everything. T. Diddy? Everything. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the only way to get on the show, actually, is to say T. Diddy name is at the email. <laughs> no, it's no, only no. way everybody know it too. They be like, "Oh, I almost forgot." Hey, T Diddy, that's the only way for me to get on. Okay, what's up, y'all? You know what I'm saying? So I, so I lost Diddy. some bread. I thought she was gonna get her own little segment on the show, but she stayed back. She was cool. It was a really dope show. I saw her post. You know the first saying? thing I saw her post was my live show sold out. <laughs> My first live show sold out. I said, go ahead. That's her, Taylor. that's her, man. <laughs> go ahead. It was her Fucking show. Diddy. It was Get definitely her. her show because she uh, came late and everything. L'Oreal like, where's this? Where's that? They're like, where's T. Diddy at? Oh, she, she out there getting ready. Make my goddamn list. Oh, she was getting ready. She was getting ready. What you mean? She was in the dressing room. The door was like L'Oreal tried to get into the room. Stop playing, yo. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Stop playing. I'm dead serious. The door was in there. She had the people in there getting her done for the show. We was like, I, I didn't expect nothing else. What do you mean getting her done for the show? What man? you mean she getting ready for the show? Make up her hair? Yes. And stop playing. <laughs> what are you talking about? What the, you expect anything else? No, I actually <laughs> don't. God damn it. I didn't expect nothing else either. Well, congrats on a great live show. Blesses, well man. done, T. Bless, Diddy. Um, how was the week? I think we know why we're here. Jesus. <laughs> why are we here, bro? Definitely because of Jesus. Dude, I want to talk up. Rogan, man. Oh, shit. Uh, okay. That's been, old news, bro. I still it's, don't definitely, know it, it, it's definitely old news. Yeah. It's definitely old news. I actually, um, I really liked what India Ari said yesterday. What did she say yesterday? She oh, number one, she said she don't think Joe Rogan is racist. Uh -huh. um, she just thought it was insensitive. And she said that um, she's not into cancel culture. So she, she actually, what was her initial comments? Because I think that's, she's commenting on her initial thing. She was like, take my stuff off Spotify. Yeah, and she expounded on that. Her initial comments was, um, you know, Spotify pays artists pennies, but, you know, pays Rogan $100 million. And Rogan mm. says things like this. She, does, she, she was like, it wasn't even just the COVID misinformation. Misinformation, I put that in air quotes. You know, it was his, his language around race. But what she said yesterday was real, man. She was like, yo, we, I'm, I don't believe in cancellation. I believe in curation. Yeah. Meaning, I chose to step away from Spotify because I don't want to be on a platform yeah. that supports that. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, I mean, she said more than that, of course. Y'all can you know, insert it if you want. But I was just like, yo, that is, that's what everybody should do. We live mm. in a curation culture. Yeah. If you don't like something, just simply don't listen. Like, and she mm -hmm. said she's not in the censorship. And I, I'm going to be honest, man. It's just, that's not even happening. I don't got to be honest. It's the truth. If you're a radio personality, podcaster, rapper, mm. comedian, artist, artist in general, yeah. anybody that r does this for a living, if you open your mouth and words come out for a living, yeah. you can't be for censorship. Yeah, that is correct. And if you are a comedian, if you are from a, a certain era, <laughs> There is no way in hell 
you Bro. can look at Joe Rogan and be like, that's fucked up. Right. That's what kills me about all of this. Yeah. The lack of self-awareness that some people Damn. have, the hypocrisy that some people have. Did, did you see the YouTube live between Dave Portnoy? You know Dave Portnoy? Yeah, he yeah, runs Barstool. School. Yeah. So he did a YouTube live with the three dudes that, um, I guess, are running this company that populated the internet with the Rogan's video. Mm -hmm. So they were like sharing it with a bunch of, and I could be getting this wrong, so forgive me if I get it wrong, but more or less they were involved in like sharing this with uh, celebs and specifically targeting like black celebs, black entertainers, et cetera, to kind of galvanize mm -hmm. the internet and push it. And he's doing this whole thing and they're like, no, nah, it's not our fault and freedom of speech, et cetera. And again, I could be getting this wrong, but. Towards the end, he goes, now, what if, I, so none of you guys, so the guy goes to Rogan, he goes, so, uh, to Portnoy, he goes, so you promise you'll never use the N-word ever uh, uh, again on broad uh, on broadcast. Because Portnoy had been sung, sung it in a song or yeah, a couple yeah, things, yeah, yeah. right? And uh, he goes, he goes, yeah, I've already said I'm not going to do that. And then Portnoy goes, do you guys promise you'll never use it again? And they're like, we never use it. And he goes, what if I said I had a text message from one of you guys where you use the N-word in a text message? And they're like, that's never happened. What are you even talking about? And he goes, does one of you guys have a fiance named Lexi? Holy oh, shit. Bro, this is happening live? Holy bro, shit. Bro, this is happening live, dude? And they, they're like, what are you even talking about? And yo, these guys who are supposed to be on the same, same team, supposed to be brother. The way that one dude dogged out his homie so fucking fast, he goes, well, that would be Jared's uh, fiance. Huh? Wow. Immediately, bro. And then wow. he's like, no, nah, that never happened. He goes, wow. he goes, what if I have a text message wow. where you use that in a text? Wow. So, we, we started thinking about this. I mean, you were even hitting me up yesterday, like, wow. this, you know, you're going to look back at everybody's shit. I was talking about this the other day, like, yo, if they just release the Call of Duty or Fortnite transcripts oh, man. of these little 14-year-olds, all man. they need to do is release that bro. shit, bro. and everybody, bro. cancel culture's bro. done, baby. Yeah, the whole alphabet they say. That every, A, B, these little C, kids D, say yeah. everything. <laughs> Let me run forensics on your, anybody's phone. Sign over. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it, listen, I said it before and I say it again. I, I don't think there's ever room for a white person to use the N word just simply because nah. I don't think any of us should use it, but right. definitely a white person because it's just like there's no upside to it. <laughs> right? Yo, and yeah, I think anyway. so if, if you listen to Rogan, he agrees. Like there's this weird conversation that happened on the internet when we were calling out that this is like a clear hit piece on Rogan. Yes. And, and the people were saying, Oh, there's a lot of white people out here justifying him using the N-word. And it's like, Rogan doesn't even justify it. Rogan's like, I regret doing it. He That's why I apologize. Yeah. Like, I yeah. wish I didn't do it. He didn't call anybody the N-word. I mean, it's up to you guys to decide in what way it can be used and worse and not used at all, no. obviously. But like, but it's not like he was speaking about the word, right? He was speaking about the word. He was talking about titles heard. of albums. He was quoting comedians. The Planet of the Apes thing was the worst one to me. But yeah, even and he that, says that's the most regrettable. And that, but by the way, that, that was 12 years ago. We've all made fucked up jokes, terrible yes. jokes. And, yes. and, and, and the, I listen to Joe Rogan. I don't know him personally like you do. I met him twice, but I've been listening to him over a decade. The one thing I've always liked about Joe is his self-awareness. Yes. Right? So if he's in, if you go back and watch the Planet of the Apes thing, even in that commentary, he literally goes, oh, my bad, that's fucked up. That was racist. And then he switches and starts talking about the love he was, he, 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 how he loved being in that environment and how he enjoyed yeah. watching in the movie in that setting, whatever, whatever. But it's just like, man, the thing that really got me this week was just the lack of self-awareness of some people because I'm watching certain folks take him to task and I'm like, bruh, bruh I've been I've following you for years. <laughs> like, like uh, and what happened on Monday? Monday morning, literally, oh, oh. everybody started getting aired out. Mm -hmm. Everybody, all of these mm -hmm. different people start getting aired out. All of these different things they said on blogs back in the day. All these yep. different things they said on television yep. or in comedy yep. shows. The Young Turks thing was very interesting to me. You know what I mean? Because I fuck with the Young Turks. St I'm still going to fuck with the Young Turks. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. But it's like, you you called them out, then they came with their own N-word compilation on, on them, right? And theirs was wild, bro. And, and what was interesting, one of the anchors from the Young Turks doubled down and was like, whenever we used the N-word, we used it while we were quoting racist. And they were like, cancel us if you want. Mm. And I'm like, I don't think that was the way that should have been handled. And I'm sure she might have apologized by now. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, the thing Rogan did, Rogan didn't double down. He didn't triple down. Like, yo, I apologize. Yeah. I'm going to do, I've been stopped using the word. I'm definitely going to do better moving forward. The conversation I think we're not having is, I saw people say like, you know, he caters to the right. I don't, I don't think he caters to the right. I think he's just a curious person 
who's willing to sit down with any and everybody. I think the problem is the left has made Rogan so radioactive yep. that they're afraid to go sit down with him because they're afraid about the backlash they'll get from sitting down with him. Fa- Fauci? Oh, you're talking to this. Now you're talking Absolutely. to this. Absolutely. So they paint him as radioactive so that they don't have to talk about it. You know what's so funny? The first time I went on Rogan, I literally said that. I was like, that's the strategy. Paint someone as radioactive, then you don't even have to talk to them. So now you don't even have to engage in in, in a Discourse. intercourse. Yeah. I would say. <laughs> course, but like you don't even have to have that and not even debate just like exchange ideas like dude i would love to see fauci on rogan it, shouldn't you by the way if for somebody who has an audience that big and if you think he's putting out misinformation go sit with him Damn, fauci will go on every yeah. fucking podcast every cnn show with half a million viewers the guy's getting 11 million a day why would you not go on to the podcast if you really cared about sharing information especially you cared about sharing information to the people that are most skeptical about what you're saying. Yeah. If you truly cared about helping, you about. would go to the place where you could help the most 100%, people, right? 100%. That's why it's cap. 100%. Because one thing I also noticed about Rogan, if Rogan... Here is, she is. T. Diddy. Yo. Peace, Chrissy. Hi. If, if Rogan knows about the information someone's talking about, he'll challenge them. Yes. You know what I mean? If he yes. has an opposing view, he'll challenge them. I yes. have not seen it. I've, I have not seen him have these people on his show and not challenge them. That's yes. why I enjoy listening. Now, some people will say, well, if he doesn't know what, he, what, what he's talking about, he just listens to the person. Yeah, no That's shit. what an interviewer is supposed to do. Yeah. That's how <laughs> like, it works. I, got, it's, I, I get that all the time as a broadcaster. I'll be sitting there having a conversation with somebody. I'm listening to what the person has to say. And then I see all the comments on YouTube, people challenging what the person said, this and that. Uh-huh. Great. Mm. I, if I don't have the information, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. I'm just a curious person who likes to sit and talk with people. It's not our fault yeah. that these doctors and whoever else would rather go to Rogan, mm. would rather go to the Breakfast Club, yeah, would yeah. rather sit on The View. Because the so-called experts on the CNNs and the Foxes mm-hmm. and the MSNBCs, mm-hmm. either they're not willing to engage with these people, mm-hmm. or they just don't, they don't have the reach. I don't know what it is. Or they're not allowed. Are they not or they're towing the company line and they're saying exactly what the company wants them to say, right? Remember Maybe. when we were about to run out of masks in the beginning? Yeah. Right? And they said, you don't need a mask. Fauci said that. Literally, Fauci said And why yeah. did he say that? Not because you didn't need one, because they were like, hey, we need to save all the masks for the hospital people. So yeah. don't go out and buy all the masks. So if we know that they're willing to, quote unquote, misinform. Yeah, for the better for them. For, for what they believe is the benefit. I'm not even saying misinform for bad reasons. I think a lot of times government misinforms because they're like, if we told them the truth, truth, they wouldn't do it. Or, so we, it, it's almost like with your kids, right? It's yeah. just like, you got to brush your teeth. Why? Or your teeth will fall out. They ain't really going to fall out, but I got to tell you that yeah. so you take this shit seriously. Hey, the global warming, you got, we got to take this seriously. Why? Because in 20 years, we're all going to be yeah. underwater. Yeah. Well, shit, I plan on being here in 20 years. I guess I got to take it seriously. We're yeah. not going to be underwater in 20 Listen, years. Listen, I agree with all of that and I also think sometimes they just don't know the truth, truth. Yeah, they really just that, don't know. Yeah, yeah, so it's like really th- there's things Dr. Fauci said two years ago that would be considered misinformation. Mm-hmm. Now, when he that's went out the there and said nobody should wear a mask, whatever, whatever, only doctors and stuff should wear a mask. Yep. That that could be considered misinformation. Also, now. you don't think oh. Dr. Fauci said an N-word, brother? Guys, an eighty-year-old. <laughs> <account? laughs> not sure. one, not one, bro. At, Find at me least, that at video, least bro. eggplant. At least, listen, I'm Defin- not- eggplant. What a mullion. <laughs> What? Mooly. A mooly? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I always call me a fucking mooly. Yeah. You know, you don't know what that is? Yes, I do. I didn't I know what that I thought that was a black. What was that? That's it's what Italians would call black, black people. Yeah. Black Moulin Yan means eggplant in Italian. Yeah. Yes. Eddie Murphy had that uh, hilarious skit. The mooly's gonna yeah, pay yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, listen, I've been saying, I've been saying all week. My thing is, I'm not in no moral position as a broadcaster Hit to have an opinion about right. Joe Rogan. And I'm going to tell you something. The reason I'm going to be consistent in my message mm-hmm. and the same reason I'm consistent in all my messages when it comes to any of this stuff mm. is because this can happen to any of us at yeah. any yeah. given time. Watch this will happen to your favorite <laughs> person. Mm-hmm. This yes. will happen to the person that you love. Mm-hmm. This will happen to that person that you think is so great. One of my favorite things to do is letting people tail his age, well, even though Taylor's getting up there, letting people <laughs> tail his age, letting people nail his age, you know, 30, 20 something, hear stuff from our era. Yeah. yeah. They can't believe it. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, how I used to like, be. Like, they yeah. re- literally cannot believe the things comedians used to say, the things people used to rap about, the things that used to be in movies. It's unbelievable <laughs> to them. 
I was, he was watching the uh, the old Howard Stern sketch. Wow. Let me tell you how ill Howard is. Howard wow. went on The View in 2019. I couldn't believe that. Alex said he couldn't believe. How old are you, Alex? Uh, 33. 33. How, but this is the ill part. When Howard went on The View in 2019, Sonny was like, <laughs> you know, you used to really have some real offensive stuff on your show back in the day. You used to use the N-word all the time. Howard goes, I did not. He goes, wait a minute. <laughs> he goes, wait a minute. I did not use to use the N-word. Amazing. I used to have a character on there who was a member of the KKK. He used to use the N-word. And then the, whoever did it slices the video The Howard with the black face on pretending to be Ted Danson. And he got... <laughs> George Jefferson Sherman, yeah. him pretending to be Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi, yeah. He wow. let so many N words fly. Oh my, yo, it got uncomfortable. Yeah. What do you call? <laughs> it was like, what do you call a black pilot? An uh, N word. <laughs> Whoa. What do you call a black astronaut? An N word. You smell an yeah. N word. And I'm like, shit. Yeah, it's kind and of. And he was actually pushing the line mm. and using the word in a now, really negative context. Now let's give context to this thing. It made me feel uncomfortable watching, but the context is it Ted a- Danson who was dating Whoopi Goldberg, yes. mm-hmm. went to a Friar's Roast mm-hmm. in blackface. Mm-hmm. And what Howard was basically saying is, Ted, it is racist what you did. Yes. And we're going to show how racist it is yes. by creating the exaggerated version of it. Absolutely. So he basically gets, a, he thinks he can get away with uh-huh. it. No, no, again, again. Yeah. He thinks he can get away with he it. Could he could in that like, era. And in that era. You know how you know he could? He did. He yeah. did. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, That's my point. So, have y'all seen a Carlin bit about the M-word? Yes. That I is. Carlin. I seen Louis C.K. No, no. The Carlin one is the wildest one. And rest in peace, Carlin. But he, 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 no, I do remember, but I can't remember. I just remember him He saying basically it. says this. He says the point is like, a word by itself is nothing. Right? Oh, but when it you add stuff to it. the context to the yeah, word, yeah, yeah, yeah. who is saying the word, yeah. like the N-word by itself is nothing, but the racist redneck saying it makes it bad. Right? And he goes, that's why black people can say the N-word. Right? Or that's when he goes, that's why Richard Pryor and blah, blah, can say the N-word. Right? Because he, then he goes, because they're N-words. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, they're, yeah. they're allowed to yeah. because we know that they don't hate other black people. Yeah, 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 and yeah. that's why I guess it's okay. He's trying to make the point, but he like drops it and Hard ER. I don't even know, but like it was—it's just wild. Like, I, I, what was happening at this time? Were we just not asking black people how they felt about it? Was no, that really they gave a like fuck. low key? I'm low key I, because here's the thing: I was thinking about this, and I was like, when I was younger in high school, we read Huckleberry Finn. Oh yeah, out loud. Yeah, every kid had a paragraph. N-word. Yeah, a paragraph. And I went to a diverse high school, right? So like, you're just seeing if your paragraph got an M word. <laughs> and the teacher basically, <laughs> the teacher basically said, yo, if you want to say it, you can say it. If you don't want to say it, you don't have to. Right. So these poor Asian kids who their first generation, they don't even know what most of the words mean. Like, they're reading it. They're just sounding shit out. Like you just reading the Spanish Come billboard. On, man, Bro, up. I swear to God. <laughs> a bit. No, I swear to God. I'm not lying. I it, but I can't say the N word. But, <laughs> but yo, they would literally, and we would calculate it. We'd be like, ooh, 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 yeah, that's got a bunch of N words right there. That's a paragraph with Jim. Jim's saying that shit, right? And then boom. And then it, we're calculate, we're counting the people. Oh we're my god! Each other. Oh shit! It's on, it's on Lou or whatever the fuck the yeah, guy's name is. Yeah. And bro, he would hit that shit hard. And you know how they would have the slang and word in it? <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it was like a southern yeah, slang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> so it was almost like he was making Mark Twain. Porn. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Nothing funnier in your whole life than that. Right. <laughs> Nothing funnier in your whole like an Asian kid who's never who barely speaks English just dropping hard and bombs oh, in a class of thirty man. people. Even the black kids were dying laughing. They're like, "This isn't racist. Yeah, the guy doesn't even know." Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, but 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 the era we grew up in, man, Teacher's racist. it wasn't just yeah. the N-word, though. Yeah. It was the slurs towards women. It was what, the, what, what is that? All of the B-word, the H-word. What's word? the B-word? I'm not saying it. Broccoli. 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 Exactly. <laughs> These broccolis. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but it, it, was, it was all like every slur that was used for anybody We're not gonna was thrown around. the B-word with, with, with the N-word, bro. I mean, I still like the B-word. Listen, I'm with you, but I'm not a woman. Yeah. Say what? I'm not a woman. Yeah. A woman, a woman takes the B word the same way we take the N word. No, no, stop it. It is, it is. No. Because the girls can say it. I don't call. We can't say it. I don't like no, I don't call my girls like bitches like that. I don't I, believe that. No, look, if I do. Let no, me no, see no, your no, phone. Yes, bitch. Let me see your phone. Yes. She's definitely do you have a fi- hey, Do you have a fiance? I always, do you have a fiance no, named I Lexi? Always say, <laughs> I, <laughs> I always say girl before I say bitch. Before you say bitch. Like, you believe that? Have I ever called you a bitch? Thank you. Don't drive me. What? I don't believe that. Why do you not it's believe hard. it? I just don't say. believe it. 
I don't believe no, it. No, for real though. But if I, I don't a guy that. calls me a bitch, he's yeah. already getting slapped. Like, what are you saying? Like, yes, but what if he's describing I, you know your behavior? Guys, what if he's describing your behavior? <laughs> is it, he's dog? acting like that. What if no, you're acting like that? No, I'm a female fucking dog. Well, don't who knows? What if you're at a music festival? There's no place to take a piss. You bark it. outside. Yeah, shut the fuck up. You can't be yo. You're pissing like a bitch. You can't say that. Yeah, you can't say that. up this side. That's in context. That's context, right? But but you're not gonna take it like that. And same thing with the gay slur. Yeah. Gay slur, you can't, that hits a, a gay person in a different way. Yeah. My point is, everybody used to throw their language around. Oh, dude. In the, in the era we grew up in, everybody <laughs> threw it around. It was out there. Our guy, Neil Brennan, said, I was talking to Neil this week. Neil was like, yo, man, what happens when your F, when your F tape drops? Because <laughs> he was like, if you came up in a certain era, everybody got an F tape. Every, yeah. like, I can go to so many rappers and just pull up when they was throwing the F word around. Oh, yeah, it's all yeah. The gay slur, just throwing it around, throwing it around, throwing it around. Yeah. And by the way, we, we didn't say it in reference to gay people. Yeah. We yeah. Saying, you know what I mean? No, 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 I'm lying. We did mean? say it. But, 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 but you, you never, say it in reference to each other, Yeah, too. but you never called a gay person They would probably be like, yo, you acting like a B word. Yeah. Like, yo, you acting like, you acting like a, you know what I mean? Like what? A female dog. Shut up, man. I, call, <laughs> I don't know what. Let's I go call on. A guy bitch. Mutually assured destruction. Yo. Mutually assured always that's, 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 that's what it is. Yo, literally, everybody just got to come out and say it all at the same just time. Just drop it all on what? the table. Everybody, everybody put your shit out. That's yo. it. So let's get yo, it over. Once everybody got nuclear weapons, we stopped going to war. <laughs> you right? Right? You, everybody right. got to drop it. But everybody on got to go. One, two, two three. three. <laughs> now you going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> nah, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. When I text no, no, you, no, no, no. when I text you, remember when you were showing me all the videos of all the people who have said the N-word? Yes. When I text you? I don't remember. I said, I'm a hero. Oh, you, this guy's so stupid. I'm a hero. <laughs> all he I've been like, talking. No, he, said, he said, all these white people are dropping the N-word. He said, and then he goes, I'm a hero. <laughs> <laughs> I never dropped it, not once. <laughs> you sure, man? But it's because you grew up in New York. <laughs> What's that? You, know you grew better. up in New York and you younger. Yeah. yeah, and y'all yeah. are scary. <laughs> <laughs> that sound more racist than yeah. that. No, that sound like the truth, though. <laughs> that, that sound more. That sound more racist. Listen, I bet you. Yeah. I bet that you right somebody. That sound more racist. Yo, I bet you a white person <laughs> fucking racist away without with it. it. There's, ha, ha, ha. There's levels to this racism. Nah, guys. you real shit. <laughs> I, I, nah, you I can't crazy, stop man. me you now. You, you, know, you gotta appreciate the people who actually say it because them the ones who showing that they racist. All the people that's not saying no, it, that's the, they that's really say they really. Racist. Angela, you asked me a question as we go into breakfast. Club. What did she, she said, ask you? What did she, said, she say? She said, can you use a slur and not be whatever the slur you use? Like, so if I use a, if I say the N-word, does that make me racist? If I use a slur towards women, does that make me misogynistic? No. No. And, and, and if that's the case, there's so many people that we got to check off. That means that every single person that's ever used a gay slur is homophobic. Mm. Even if you like, in your raps, whatever, your comedy, whatever, mm. any person that's ever used a, 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 a negative term towards women is homophobic, misogynistic. Mm. Anyone who's ever said... Or oh, you don't love her. The N-word is racist. Like, mm. And by the way, man, if you want to go down the list of white... Yo, let's go down the list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where, where do you want to start? You want to start with Joe Biden? Hey, Joe, Joe Biden said the N word. The nineteen eighty five Senate what? hearing. He was. I'm oh, sure. Nineteen eighty. I sent it to you. Nineteen eighty five Senate oh. hearing. He's quote. He's quoting. He's quoting somebody. What he say? Why they keep getting trying to get oh, away I'll with that you, shit? Me. I'll let you hear. You, you just because you quote somebody, you get to get away with it. Eh. He's quoting somebody. I sent it to Taylor. Taylor can insert it. Even look like Biden, by the way. It's nineteen eighty five. Why? Because he was a stud. <laughs> and he I was wasn't even born. Box. Why do y'all act like people don't born. age? Yeah, that's, that's the weirdest thing. It does not look like I don't. see Y'all do that about everybody. I thought somebody. That's racist. <laughs> that's racist because white people age worse. Tell you you can just say, oh, it doesn't look like that. That's racist. Okay, when you even, share the fucking cocoa butter. <laughs> when you even <laughs> taste up, keep it on your products it's yourself. Shea butter. Were Whatever. You, were you born in 85? No. Exactly. You didn't born. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe Biden says it in 85. You know. Eminem says it in a freestyle. Justin Bieber said it. Uh, but that was wild. Howard though, Stern man. said Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon, well, Vince McMahon looked at John Cena and said, what's up? Right here. <laughs> then turned the Booker T and his wife. Bro. He <laughs> said, right here. But <laughs> no, no, no. The funniest thing is, do you remember when Booker T said it and then caught himself and felt bad? Booker T said it? Yeah, there's a Booker T. Is he say black? That's yes, he out. is black. Yeah. But he said he was uh, something, something, something and dropped it. And he was like, mm. he probably didn't want to say it in front of all the white people. I get it. But isn't it funny that Vince McMahon was like, let's That's what I'm saying. He was, part of, he was part of the sketch. How he got less hair? That's him in the back. Oh, it's right? 85. 85, Joe Biden was 57. Oh, dude. That's him in the back? No, that's him right there, man. Is this right here? I would nah, I never knew that it. was him. You're right. If you, so. go, if, you, if you Google Joe Biden, then where it'll come up. But who else? Um, I did, 
I just saying. Well, listen, Larry David, you're not going to sit here and tell me you didn't laugh at the Kirby enthusiasm stuff. He said it? What do you mean? What Larry David has one of the best sketches when he walks in and he's trying to explain to his white friends what somebody said to him and he says it. And when he says it, Vivica Fox walks out the room oh, and well, she I goes, what that. the fuck did I you just that. say? Yada, yada. And him and Vivica and JB Smooth and all of them get on it. Yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, you, you, should, you should put white people in word. How do I um, make Instead it? of just Biden. No, that's it right there. No, I'm trying to make a TV. Listen. Not Listen, I'm not. And by the way, I'm not making no excuses for. Hold on. As Dude, the I've governor, the court concludes. You never heard this? The governor's opposition to the Nunez plan no. was predicated in significant part on his delineation of a majority black district centered in He's Orleans Parish. That. In a confidential uh, portions of your staff memo, they brought to your attention the allegation that important legislators and legislators in defeating the Nunez plan in the basement said, quote, we already have a nigger mayor. We don't need any more nigger big shots. And the court cited evidence of discriminatory intent on the part of other legislators. Because he's being critical of this person who said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the legislators, quote. But, yeah. but, but by the way, I remember during, his, during the campaign, yep. people cut that. And threw it out into the ecosystem. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, out, the, the, take it out of context. So I'm not making any excuses for, you know, white people using the N-word. All I'm simply saying is, what are the rules? You know what I mean? There was a time mm -hmm. in the 90s. There was a time in even the early 2000s where everybody was getting away with saying and doing a lot of wild shit. Yes. In the sake of comedy. In the sake of music, in the sake for the sake you of know better, do the better. Of art. If you know better, do better. Shit you know changed. Yeah, I hear mm. change. And by the way, that was that. I would assume that was that was extremely risky for a white comedian. Mm. I would assume only like the the ones that were really willing to take it there would do stuff Willing like to get that. punched same in the way, mouth. Same way now, people look at us, Dave Chappelle, and be like, man, for him to be talking about the LGBTQ community in that way, that's like really edgy in this era. Right. I think it would be the same for But, uh, but if somebody catch him outside, then. it's up to him. I'm saying just like a white person, if you want to say it, you, you want to get punched in the mouth, it's all up to Even you. Even in context? It's, whatever you want to do, it all depends on who's there. Has a white guy done that to you before? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Recently. A couple of times. Recently. Last yeah. year. And Ooh. I went, I, I, went I, I talked to him. I, I told him right now, I said, yo, don't say it. I said, yo, don't say it. Yeah, you, who is it? Who I'm know. not going to say who yeah, it was, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's, it's one of our partners. He was yeah, talking, yeah, but he was quoting... That's what I'm saying. He, he was quoting something somebody... He was actually quoting what cops said in to, the yeah. 90s. And somebody else to another one of the other guys. He was quoting what cops said in the 90s in regards to stop and frisk or was it plain clothes? Yeah. It's something, it, was some, it was one of them and he was quoting why uh, if Eric Adams brings it back, it won't work. This is what's going to happen because that's how they was looking That's at. right. And he, he was quoting. Yo, I always tell y'all this story about when we was in West Virginia. Our guy Shane, God bless the dead. Yeah. I had that motherfucking ski mask on. And Shane turned around. You appreciate that and one. And he was red as fuck. And he yelled. He said, Charlemagne, don't go in that goddamn store with that mask on. Oh. You an N-word in West Virginia. They'll kill you dead. If he would have said it any other, other way. Other way, you probably would brush it off. Yeah? But I heard the urgency in his voice. <laughs> that ER is struck. And it is, it, it, <laughs> it, 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 when you say the N-word in this era, you don't know if somebody really just said the N words. You're not yeah. taking it But when yeah. you hear somebody say, mm, you're like, whoa. Uh, I, you know I, I, I mean? see where you're going at with this, yeah. And also, I remember another thing, and Duval will tell you this. I remember being in West Virginia, uh, in Simpsonville, with Shane and all his friends. His friends are considered rednecks. And me and Duval using the word. One of the rednecks said, man. I got a friend, man. His name's Jermaine, man. You know, he's African-American. He wouldn't like that, man. I think y'all need to stop using that word. Y'all making me uncomfortable. Yeah, that's cool. You would have thought he would have been one of the main ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like dropping the word. But he's telling me, well, I'm like, I right, respect. I don't like the word. I'm going to be honest with you. I, don't, I personally don't like the word. And the reason I don't like the word is because I use it in context. I don't use it as a term of endearment. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. When I used to say, I don't talk to N-words after 5 p.m. Yeah, okay? yeah, and yeah, I mean yeah. ignorant people of all races. Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't use it. I've never. Way. I don't like the word. It's not a term of endearment. You know what I'm saying? And I never use it bad. What do you mean? If I'm gonna use something bad, I'm gonna come get you. I'm gonna fuck you up, or I'm gonna say something else. Me saying that to a guy that's really a dude at the end of the day when it comes to us. Yeah, is really nothing. You know what I'm saying? How do you? But you yeah. got it. But you, I don't know. I just think what about, am I going? What, am I bad at you? I'm gonna say that. The fuck I'm saying that for? I just feel like you're a nerd. You're not saying that. 
It's so easy to get not mad. Say. You're not gonna make me mad off that. As all right, as a white dude, it is very easy not to say it. I've never said it. Uh, I hang out with you guys all the time. You guys sometimes say it. I do not say it. It is very easy to not say. It. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I understand that people say it to be provocative, et cetera. It's I don't know. Maybe since I've had more black friends, I've like seen people say it, or they've told me about people saying it to them in like a hurtful way. Maybe I it changes things. You ever see somebody see get punched in the mouth by saying it? No, no, not on, on video. Maybe. What about yeah. but the no. cracker? What's that? You get offended, cracker. No. Don't nobody care. That shit. Don't the way you me. offend white I people, I'll be honest with you. Like, because I know that people want to know how to do this. No. <laughs> it's the way you offend white people is you inconvenience us. We look at inconvenience <laughs> as an lying. attack. You this do, is what Karenism like, is all about. That's all it is. I mean, this here, it's here. No, like, real shit. So, like, non-white people and also, like, poor white people don't count in this. Mm -hmm. Poor white people are inconvenienced all the time. So, like, they're okay with it. Yeah, like, trailer yeah. park people don't, like, fucking go Karen ever. Right? Because they understand, like, fuck. But middle class to rich white people, yeah. an inconvenience to them is an attack. If you're a minority, you get inconvenienced all the time. Somebody follows you around a store, you're like, motherfucker. Yeah, Someone yeah, pills yeah, you yeah, over yeah, for no yeah, reason, you're yeah, like, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, so you don't yeah. care in about things like that because you're used, used to, to inconvenience. Rich, especially rich white people. I live in a building with fucking all these like super rich white people, right? And if one thing goes wrong in the building, they fucking lose their mind. I believe it. There's a whole text thread that we're all on, which yes. just them complaining. They just complain. <laughs> and I watch these people complain. Oh, the elevator button was, uh, it was, but do you understand wasn't working. what's really going on? What's that? Did you know what they used to break papers in college? What do you mean? You know, Adderall's. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I could see that. And that making yeah. them like a little bit more like ornery or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, I think there's one word that pisses white people off. What's that? Racist. Mm. Yeah. Well, if you, you call, call them a racist, you actually you call, call a white yeah. person a racist or accuse a white person of racism, even yeah. if they, even if what they did is an extreme act of racism, they, they will still, lose their mind. I fucked the black guy before. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> they say. Wow. What? They say that. That's right. That, yeah. By the way, y'all gonna need something else other than my best friends are black. That might be a good one. Oh, you know I fuck, what I mean? I fuck yeah. And both I both sexes guys. should use. It. Yeah. <laughs> if, you get, if you get caught out there. Doing something racist, using that word, be like, I fucked a black guy before. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? That'll change the conversation. Or Trust I know me. wax. Okay? Yeah, I can't be but racist. I know wax. It's like, because even we when- We love like, doing that. That, oh. is the, that is a great point. Racism. Yeah. No, no. But racism, yeah, that, that is one thing. Because on the radio, mayonnaise pisses people off. Yeah. It used to be the funniest shit in the world. <laughs> people would call the front desk mm -hmm. and leave all of these complaints about me calling them man. <laughs> like, and I used to describe it. I'd be like, yo, mayonnaise, yeah, you, you just don't need a lot of it. Too much of it ruins anything. You need, you need just enough yeah. to have the best tuna fish, you know, the best potato salad. Yeah. But it was like, why does he keep referring to us as mayonnaise? Like, yeah, they would be the funniest shit. Did you see right? it now? You see how it look now? Huh? You see how it look now? Uh-uh. Oh my gosh! I don't pay attention. You see, you see the things at the office. The, uh, oh mayonnaise. yeah, because it's spoiled. Cause I used to always have, oh, to have a jar right. of mayonnaise in there, and I would <laughs> put it, slam it on the desk. Listen, I totally understand why people don't like me. All right, I never thought about it. <laughs> I get you it, I get never it. think about it. It's like I really used to fuck with people and agitate people. Still do, yeah. but really in a real way. Yeah, you, you now, attention on, on TV. Yeah. yeah, Cracker does piss people off. My IMDB rating is like one something. And literally every comment is because of the crack. Of the every movie. single I don't one. Think, I don't think with you it's the word. I think you it's it's the generalization. And I think white people don't like unfair when it affects them. Mm. I think white people, we ignore unfair if it, it puts us at some sort of advantage or puts mm -hmm. someone else at a disadvantage. And I think most people do that in general, mm -hmm. right? And But when we're... But when, for example, you're like decrackification and crack this, whatever, they're going, wait a minute, why is this guy allowed to generalize on all white people? If I was to generalize on black people, I would be called racist. But I don't, I'm very specific. TV show. I know you are. Good white people. Sure. Yeah. But like what he, what they're viewing is, oh yeah, but if I was to speak about black people, that is unfair. I'm going to point that out. True. That's yeah. what you just said. Don't. Oh, what Andrew just said is another good point. That's what we don't talk about enough either. What's that? Sometimes people are just mad about the power that somebody else has. Yeah, mm -hmm. literally. Want to challenge it? Literally, I keep hearing the thing about people like, why this? Why does Whoopi get suspended, but you know Joe doesn't? It's because Joe's a white man and Whoopi's a black woman. Nah, it's because of the companies they work for. Yeah, to me, that's what I think. Because this ABC is a really no nonsense company. This is the same company that fired Roseanne Barr, you know, two years ago, right? From, from the comments she made about I think it was Michelle Obama or Valerie Jarrett or something like that. Right. 
Spotify is a different type of medium. They're a different type of entity. If Spotify gets in the censorship business, how much music do they got to remove? Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. Forget the forget the voices. How much music would they have to remove? Yeah. I, if, I think it was Spotify who tried to do that. With did they try to make a stand against XXX Tentacion or somebody, and it kind of like backfired against them? It's just like, yo, these companies like that cannot get into the censorship business. Mm. But it's not like it's not still costing them because they said they're gonna give up a hundred million dollars. Yeah, you know what I mean. Also, the views show is about censorship, right? It's like every day these four women are just yapping about how people should get canceled because they said something wrong. <laughs> and one of them said something wrong, and it's like, yo, that's your bed lying it. Yeah, you can't go on there every single day talk about how these people need to get out of here. You can't act like this, and then you say some wild shit. And low, low key, she said First some wild all, shit, right? It's like. What she say? Like the, the Holocaust wasn't about Jews; it was about no. The Holocaust people. wasn't about race. That's it wasn't about said. race. It right. was it was about people. But that like I, I'm that's just to, historically inaccurate. But I and I've been trying to explain to people that's like that's like uh like people saying like um 9/11 was an attack on New York. It was an attack on America. It's like was it? <laughs> kind of seemed I like mean, an attack on New no, York. What fam. you just said is the no. What you just said is perfect. Yeah. Because what she said is wrong, right? Mm -hmm. The Holocaust was absolutely about race. But then she goes into the whole. You know, if we're, we just were just people. if we were just better people, if people had more humanity, things like this yeah. wouldn't happen. Sure. Hold on, she got suspended for that. Wait, 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 wait. Cash hush, is... hush. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't even, don't even, don't even. But like, I really love black people, though. A lot of black people, including me. Yeah. When I think of race, I literally think of just black and white. I'm not thinking that's going ridiculous. Into it. But why? That's what we're taught in the race. No, we're not. What are you, Christy? Exactly. You as a black woman, how can you not see somebody? Mm -hmm. As much as y'all complain about not being seen. I look mm. at Spanish people as much as we are. So, that's not true, though. So look, but I'm just, I know she is, but I'm but saying wait, wait. she's also my... Um, that's a racial among the so No, she's among minority, though, right? This is, this she's is, still so, Spanish. So, Taylor, this I, is important. This is important. Let, let me explain real quick. I know this sounds ridiculous. Taylor it sounds all like fucking Taylor white. Taylor doesn't do good with races, though. Keep that in mind. I know, I know. But here's the thing. I know it sounds ridiculous and fucking woke and whatever, but just trust me. But I'm saying it's ignorant of me. No, no, I know, I know. True. Let me just say one thing. I'm just saying... Taylor, we know now is made up. There's no genetic characteristics that define race. We've made up. It's race. a social construct. It is. It, now I, I can't believe us and a brilliant idiot use the woke language. A social it's a social construct. It literally a guy in Sweden has just as much in common with a guy in Ethiopia genetically, right? Actually, yeah. maybe more in common than that Ethiopian has mm -hmm. with a guy from Cameroon, right? Yeah. They've done these studies. It's crazy. So there's no actual like genetic distinction. But once you start the slippery slope of like we've created races. It's not really up to us to stop it. For example, a Spanish person can look whiter than me, blonde hair, blue eyes. Yeah. And I'm sure you have maybe, I don't know, a part of uh, boy, Puerto Rican or something like that, Dominican. Yeah. So I'm sure you've met a Dominican that's got fucking blue eyes, blonde <laughs> what are you hair. About to say? Right? Careful now. Careful. Everybody calm down. <laughs> okay, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> I'm getting married. <laughs> what? I'm getting married. Okay, good, 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 good. <laughs> good, 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 good. One last hurrah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like you've seen all different quote unquote races of Dominicans like we've all seen you've seen Dominicans that are black yeah, and then you've seen Dominicans that look white but right. we go Spanish is a race right now also like go come on the mic come on the mic Christy come on come on, come on. there you go hola come on Stop. go 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 I don't see um, Spanish as a race only because I feel like when you have to choose a race Hispanic is not an option. It's but you're Dominican. Thing. Dominican's a race, right? Yes, but it's a whole nother question. And I actually get offended. I got offended the other day. I just had a daughter five months ago and I had to fill out her passport application. Yes. And for race, I couldn't put that she was Hispanic. So I, really? Why though? You cannot. It's not an option. It's well, African American. There's Caucasian. Yeah, there's whole, non-Hispanic. Yeah, and then there's other. So but, I always yeah. put other. But his, it bothers me because I'm like, I couldn't even put that my daughter's they, Hispanic. I Hispanic was on there. No. no why do not. they do that? They yeah. used to do Hispanic and then non-Hispanic. Uh, yeah. Then it used to be uh, Hispanic white and then like yeah. non-white. So what is, so what is Spanish? Yeah. So you put other? I put other. Wow. Hispanish on there? And then you got to fill it in. No. And I and I actually, I don't even put Hispanic. I put Dominican. Yeah. Mm. But so so here's a perfect example. Like we look at Asian as a race. Right. But now you also have like Indians. Indians aren't black. They aren't white. Right. They aren't Asian. They're kind of their own people. So you go, OK, here's your own people. What is it, what, Mexicans what is... are different than Dominicans. Right. Yeah. You're like, oh, they're kind of their own race. Native Americans were like, oh, I guess they're their own race. What is Akash? Akash is Indian. OK. So Desi that they would call themselves like Desi yeah, yeah, people, yeah. Pakistani Indians. And then Arabs. Right. You look at people in the Middle East. You're like, oh, they're their own thing as well. Wow. Once we start inventing all these 
groups and all these like archetypes of people. I don't think that we can close the door if Jews want to identify as their race. But Jews, just like Spanish people, have a bunch of different, quote unquote, races within their race. My buddy Dove, you guys have all met Dove, mm -hmm. is from Africa. He's yeah. Moroccan, right? Oh, yeah, Moroccan. But if you look at Jews that maybe Whoopi Goldberg is talking about, the Jews that were in Germany at the time, you're like, yo, they look whiter, whiter than Schultz. You're right. But the problem with what Whoopi Goldberg said is there is historical context to it. You cannot say the Holocaust was not about race, regardless of how you viewed him, yeah. when the reality is Adolf Hitler literally was killing them because he thought they were an inferior race. race. Those yes. are his words. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And by the way, it's not your place to say <laughs> if she said anything bad because you're not no, Jewish. I know, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't think she was trying to erase the Jewish, like... She uh, did, though. Even though but she may I'm not have been, she, she did. That's what I'm saying. She wasn't Before trying. Before we have so that's this conversation, wasn't... tell me what year World War II started. If you don't know, we're not having the conversation. I'm not having the conversation. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, so it's right. like, it's like right. everybody got a fucking point of view, You're and right. they don't know shit. I wasn't so even just like I wasn't done. Right? I'm done. I, like, right? I can't tell you shit. <laughs> I just found out where I was born. <laughs> That's <laughs> real, though. That I just hope we get back to a, a, a moment. And then this is why I hope. And I told Andrew this this week. I said, I really feel like this situation might cancel cancel culture. Joe Rogan's situation. Bro, yeah. And the reason I said that is because I think for everybody got to step back and realize we all got some shit with us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think that we all have to get to a point where we understand context matters, intention matters, timing <laughs> Timing. Matters. Yo, timing matters. Timing might be the most important mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Like, yo, know. we it's got like, three people performing at the Super Bowl this weekend. Mm -hmm. That have all dropped <laughs> hard, hard F-bombs. Hard. <laughs> Listen, tw do you, understand, do you understand why this is the first time this is happening? Talk to me. Because 25, 30 years ago, it would be unheard of. And yeah. on social media, though. It would be unheard of. Yeah. So the fact that this weekend, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, yep. and Eminem. Mm are getting a chance to perform at the Super Bowl halftime show. I'm waiting on the backlash. Kendrick Lamar. Uh, mm. Kendrick, no. Kendrick is good. Trust me. Kendrick is yeah. a choir boy. But, 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 <laughs> come, but who are these people? The who's wilder. the people that's mad? I don't, we never know who these people are. fuck they. Hey, you say fuck, fuck they until they put that compilation video yeah. together. Don't be talking about Kevin <laughs> Levine. I don't give like a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and also, the moral of the story is there's definitely a price to everything that comes out of your mouth. I keep trying yes. to tell y'all this. And we ideally will continue to lower the price. No. Nah. Well, once it's mutually assured destruction, right? Like, and again, I don't know. I operate in a different field, right? I'm a comedian. So everything that I say, including and usually the most offensive things, the intent is laughter. Like, I'm like, how can I, you know, walk this fine line and say this thing that's kind of fucked up? Joe Rogan's a comedian. Laugh. Exactly. And that's why I judge Joe as a comedian, right? I judge him as a comedian and broadcaster. Yeah. Which is a very interesting combination. Too many things. And that's tough. And you you fall on that line as well. And I know you don't identify as a comedian, but us comedians often identify I'm you as a comic. That. There we go. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> for real. No, for real. Like, because because I think that's one of the things that always got you in trouble initially is that I think you had a lot of respect for stand up. So you're like, I'm I don't, I'm not a comedian. I don't tell jokes. I tell the truth. Right. Oh, Lord. But you. <laughs> right. Great branding at the time. Great though. branding. Great branding at the time. But as, as a comedian, I'm watching. I'm like, these are jokes. I know what a joke is because yeah, I do yeah, jokes yeah, for yeah. a living. Right. Yeah. And, and I always wonder. I'm like, man, I wonder if he was like, yo, I tell jokes. This is what I do. I joke around. If these things would be taken way less literally. You're absolutely right. No, Cause that's what I would always. Nah, say. Nobody, nobody right. like to get cracked on still. We could have, but like at least in my in my community of comedians, that's how we view you. It was the people I was cracking on, though. Yeah, that's what I was I'm cracking on say. people who don't want to play. Who ain't playing? <laughs> we love that. Who ain't playing? That's the most. That's the most funny. Love that. Like that's the thing. Like and that's the thing about comedy. Like. You could be like the the whitest, like nerdiest comedian, but they knew who you were. And that's how I knew you were transcending, like not just like hip hop culture or even mainstream culture. Like that's how I knew like you were getting into like comedy culture mm -hmm. because we're just finding what's funny. If you like funny things, if you're a comedian, you just value funny, whether yeah. it's some lady falling down, you know what I mean? Or it's somebody like being hilarious on a radio show. So we were watching this for comedy purposes. And when we saw people taking it seriously, it was like, oh, yeah. Man, you know who treats me like that now? You know who treats me like the, the, that com hip hop community used to treat me? Politicians. They're the ones that's hitting my line mad. Really? Yes, they're the ones that's upset. Because you stay exposing them, bro. Them. Yeah, so, I'm telling you, it's so, so interesting. Like, even this morning, 
I'm getting texts about such and such would like to talk to you about the misinformation about uh, Joe Biden and the crack pipes. I'm like, I haven't said anything about it. So it's almost <laughs> like it's a preemptive strike. Right? You know what I'm saying? No, yeah. It's almost like, like you I'm like, I haven't some said, good news. I, I'm like, I haven't said, I haven't said anything. We got to talk about them crack pipes. Listen, I read, listen, Unbelievable. here's the thing. And this, we can our condoms though. You know what? Let's pay the bill. Let's pay some bills. Let's Why? pay the bills and we come back and talk about it. Why? What's up? Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, let's pay the bills and come back and talk. This about episode it. is brought to you by Crystalline Crack Pipes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's uh, brought to you by BET's Real Husbands of Hollywood. Okay, salute to my man Kevin Hart. Uh, screaming February 10th only on BET. Real Husbands of Hollywood is back and it's out of this world crazy. Okay, this uncensored fun could only live on BET+. Plus. Kevin wants more shine. Nelly wants a, li a, a wife. You know, you're going to be very intrigued to see who he proposes to. Uh, the crew is reunited and the drama has to be seen to be believed. You got Nick Cannon, J.B. Smoove, Dwayne Martin, Robin Thicke, Jackie Long, Boris Kojo, Nelly, and of course, more Kevin Hart. Plus, more cameos from big stars this season. Tiffany Haddish, my good sister Tiffany Haddish is on. Yep. Yolanda Adams is on. Mark Cuban is on. Oh, my sister Angela Rye is on. Yep. Neil deGrasse Tyson. And a lot more, okay? Real Husbands of Hollywood, more Kevin, more problems. New season streaming February 10th exclusively on BET+. Still need to sign up so you can binge the new season of Real Husbands of Hollywood, more Kevin, more problems. Visit BET.plus to learn more and scream black culture. And can we talk about Talkspace? Oh, my God. In the era that we live in right now, man, having somebody to trust and, and love on you and have somebody and have somebody to talk to is more important than ever. But even the best relationships can hit a few bumps in the road. We've all been there. You feel unheard by your family, by your friends. You feel like you keep having the same arguments over and over. You just got to know how to move forward. All right. And Talkspace gives you unlimited access to a licensed therapist. That's who you should be talking to, a licensed therapist, so you can clear up the confusion and focus on what matters most being the best person and partner you can be. I literally posted this on social media earlier today, man. I posted that I think the best thing I ever did in my adult life was start digging deep and asking myself why I am the way I am and why I do the things the way I do. It takes a ton of work and intentionality, but getting to know yourself on a deeper level will help you thrive. And that's exactly what Talkspace is doing is helping you thrive, okay? So whether you've been married for years, you're re-entering the dating scene, are you just trying to get comfortable with being single? Talking to a therapist can help, all right? It's 2022. Just kiss and make up. Is it going to cut it anymore? All right? Sit down. You and your significant other. Talk to a licensed therapist, okay? All right? Join Talkspace today and start the journey to happier, healthier relationships. Just visit Talkspace.com and get $100 off your first month when you use promo code IDIOTS at sign up. That's $100 off at Talkspace.com. Promo code IDIOTS. Let's get back to this show. Show to you got some church announcements? Yo. Um, Canada, man. Fucking Canada, dude. They uh they keep on, you know, locking things down. And, no. Um, I know. So we're gonna have to push back some of those dates. The Vancouver dates, uh, we switched all the information will be up on my site uh soon, theandrewshulls.com. Yeah. So uh we might have to switch the Toronto dates. We're looking in to see about that. Maybe those truckers can make some real change quickly and we can yeah. still do the uh Toronto dates and uh, looking about the uh, Winnipeg shows as well. Um, but besides that, theandrewstoles.com, come check it out. We're down in uh, Birmingham, New Orleans, uh, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, obviously New Money. York. Money. Just added another Radio Money. City show, so oh, yeah. come check that out. And then uh, Atlantic City as well. I think that show is actually sold out. So theandrewstoles.com, those are the last times you'll be able to see the infamous tour before we release this special. Uh, so yeah, holler. Wax, you got your church announcements? Yes, sir, man. Go, go to whoswax.com. Show them, man. And got, we got the gummies. You know what I'm saying? I got my you got the shout out on Rogan, you know that? Yeah. That's fire. Oh, on, on Akash episode? Akash shouted you out. Go yeah. Oh, he said God. your shit fucked him up. Yeah, that's good. And that's Akash what happened. Akash said that Rogan. <laughs> no, Akash. <laughs> Did I try to Delta 8? That shit put me on my ass. <laughs> yeah, I thought you said Rogan. Dude. Yeah. You say what? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's, it's still on the show. We That's appreciate even it, good. Gosh, but, yeah, my yeah, God, I appreciate you. Through the alley, you different. He through the alley, you. These right here is my new bags out there in uh, your nearest dispensary and over in LA, man. So I go ahead and get that. Go to whoswax.com. Go mm -hmm. grab your 40 milligram gummies out there. And the Airsoft go to, um, Podcast Wars is coming up soon, man. Sign up. Uh, get your team and um, fight against your, your favorite podcast. And make what? sure you go to Bully and the Beast every Wednesday. 
What's up this week? We got on Patreon on Monday. We had a live show this past week. Yes, we, we talked about out. that, but you wasn't here, young lady. Maybe if you showed up on the show, show like, like that, you didn't come down. You were there. Matter of fact, that's how we started the show. That's how we started. You were busy getting your hair and makeup and your outfit on, and that's why you were there. That's what happened. Right, twice. It said you was getting hair and makeup. What? That's no, why you was yeah. the whole show late because of her. <laughs> what are you God, thank yeah. you. You want to talk about it? Your baby has been like that since fucking Saturday. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about it? Oh, so, I yeah, wasn't we here, but I want the flowers back. Well, thank you. I appreciate wow. it. Wow. I <laughs> want her flowers back. I want the flowers. What you mean? What you mean? If you talked about it on live show earlier and I wasn't here, I want to hear it. Holy shit. I got to get more cocky. This... I ain't cocky enough. Me neither. These people be demanding. Y'all generation is different. I'm saying I put in a lot of work on that live show. Oh, you yeah. did. Wow. T. Diddy is here. She no, that is that is true. You personalized this, tr- this we show. We really appreciate and that's why it's be a T. Success. Diddy, Twerk God, Smith, and L'Oreal. Oh. Yes, you're already <laughs> no, but, Duh. But I'm, I'm saying the video is going to drop this week for Patreon. That's what I'm saying. Yes, video is dropped this week for our live show. Um, holla at us, man. We really appreciate it. T. Diddy, Twerk God, the camera guy, uh, Smith. L'Oreal team came together and made something happen. Gang. So, yeah, what about and Christy? Charlotte? And Christy was there. Salute to Christy. Yeah. Um, mine, I just want to salute my guy, Kevin Hart. Um, you know, we announced our audible. Yo, congrats, man. Thank dope, you. Dope. Thank you, my brother. We awesome. announced um the audible deal last year, but uh this week we announced the slate. Mm. So we have uh five, you know, different audible originals coming out this year. And I know everybody keeps asking, like, you know, what is it? It's literally just audio scripted content. So it's like TV shows in documentaries in audio form. Mm-hmm. That's it. And, you know, and, and you know, I'm sure down the line the IP will turn into, you know, what you're used to visually. But I mean, I just, I love the audio world. I'm an audio guy. I do radio. I do podcasts. You know, I like audio. So um, we have Finding Tamika. It drops on March the 3rd. Okay. And it's a true crime series that deconstructs the troubling phenomenon That is the media's lack of significant coverage of cases of missing or murdered black women. And it tells uh, the story of Tamika through the voices of her family and um, other principal figures. Um, Erica Alexander, uh, she produced it. She hosted it. She co-wrote it with Color Farm Media. So salute salute to Erica. Erica's brilliant. Just just genius all the way around. And it'll be available March 3rd, but you can go pre-order it now on Audible. It's called Finding Tamika. And then we got four other projects dropping this year. We got uh, Short, Black, and Handsome, which is a scripted, <laughs> odd-style comedy starring me and Kevin and um, some other prominent short Black and Handsome comedians. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My man Chris Moreau. Salute to Chris Moreau. I was really... Oh, no. They, oh, shit. I was about to say... I was, hey, Chris. I was literally about to say I was pissed off they didn't put you in the press release, but they did add you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In summer of 85. Summer of 85, man, this is a story I didn't even know about until Chris started talking about it. But um, it took place in Philadelphia in the summer of 85, and it was the Live Aid benefit. It's the true story of the juxtaposition of two actual events that took place in Philly that year, the Live Aid benefit for Africa and the bombing of MOVE. Um, you know, MOVE, they were a group of black citizens attempting to create an African-style community. And um, yeah, it was created and co-produced by our guy, Chris Moreau. So it talks about all those events. A lot of great Philadelphia legends are on that. Um, Unleashed for Love, that's a scripted comedy series starring my good sister, Alicia Renee. Y'all know I love Leash, man. I love Leash so much. Leash has been working on this project for like seven years. Um, Her and uh, Sarita, you know, so that's something that's coming later this year. And Broke Down Profits, a scripted thriller created and written by best-selling author, uh, Sean Crosby. Okay, he wrote Blacktop Wasteland, Razor Blade Tears. Those are all number one New York Times bestsellers. So yeah, just look out for everything we're putting out on SBH Productions this year, um, via Audible, man. And can I say for the Black Effect hats, please just send me your name and address. I don't need <laughs> no one asking me, hey, can I get a black? I'm not gonna answer. Just send the address, and name. That's it. Just send the address and name. Hold on, let me make sure I said, um. Sarita's name, right? Because I'll be mispronouncing people's names. Sarita. Yes, Sarita. Because, you you know, people want their credit, as you can see, with Taylor sitting to my left. <laughs> people want their want they flowers. Them. And they Give deserve them. All creators all deserve day. their motherfucking flowers. Okay? We are nothing without the creators. Now, let's talk about... What was we going to talk about? What did we say we wanted to talk about? Oh. The crack pipes. Oh, yes. Yeah. 
What do y'all think that was? What do you think that was? Mm-hmm. I looked it up. And uh, basically, they're they're saying that um, using these, like, old crack pipes can cause a lot of, like, cuts and yes. infection. It's part of the harm reduction program. Right. Yes. So. Everybody got to play their part. They're also, I imagine, doing other things outside of crack pipes, right? I imagine maybe a new needle. Oh, no, that's the other thing. They're hoping that by using crack pipes, they don't use needles, and needles worse. is what spreads disease even quicker. Let's, let's, yes. The purpose of the program is to support community-based overdose prevention programs, mm. syringe service programs, and other harm reduction services. That's what the, the grant says. Yeah. Funding will be used to enhance overdose and other types of prevention activities to help control the spread of infectious diseases and the consequences of such diseases for individuals with or at risk of developing substance use disorders and it specifically outlines syringes and safe smoking kits supplies as an approved use as a, as an, as of as approved the you as an approved use of federal funds right here's my problem with democrats okay why do they get mad at us cuz their messaging is terrible uh... like they're acting like that language is not in there i i, I think that uh Snopes.com said it the best when they fact-checked it. They said that that the, the story of the Biden administration spending $30 million on crack pipes is mostly false, which is true. <laughs> it's true. It's, that is true. It's mostly false, right? But it is true that the grant description required the provision of smoking kits, an established component of harm reduction strategy. But in reality, those kits constituted just one of several subcomponents of an even longer list of requirements for grant recipients. In other words, while outraged media it's coverage focused almost exclusively on crack pipes, this was actually only a very small part of the program. Mm. So why are they mad at us? Because that language is in this grant. Yeah. That's not our fault. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's easily can be taken out of context. Yeah. yeah. There is nuance to it. It's not a $30 billion program for crack pipes. But there's a few million for crack pipes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? do, do, you, do, do, do you rather crack pipes, though? I'd rather get them crack pipes because them needles is really out of control. The yeah, maybe that's it. Needles, I just blood. wonder, like, if you would judge, like, if you're a crackhead and you saw someone using, like, a government-issued crack pipe, if, if you would judge them for that. No. Nah. It's, like, it's like getting weed from the dispensary. I could tell the dispensary back from somebody back in the street. Ah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it as, like, you know, we all know that in every household, they're telling their kids, do not have sex, do not have sex. Mm. And then you go to school and they get on a bunch of condoms. I think this is that yeah, but those thing. condoms are trash. I remember New York was giving out them condoms. You remember the NYC subway condoms? Those condoms. The, 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 oh. It's tuxedos. Too small? <laughs> <laughs> they tuxedo condoms. But I think that's the exact same thing what they're doing with these crack pipes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, 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 here's the problem with all of this, right? Yeah. Number one, if this administration had done what they said they were going to do for black people, mm. like pass voting rights like pass, let's just let's just say pass voting rights and pass the george floyd policing act yeah those are two tangible things that people can look at and say oh you know what that's going to impact black people but when yeah. you have an administration that hasn't done what they said they're going to do for black people yeah. and then this comes out yeah and you read that the grant serves historically underserved communities mm-hmm. which yeah. mean, you, we know that's black right yeah. and the underserved community part comes from the advanced racial equity funding mm. so when you read when you when you can put two and two together and be like wait a minute y'all giving out syringes and smoking kits under uh under something that's part of an advanced racial equity funding it's so easy for somebody to take all of that messaging and mix it up and put it out there and make it seem like they're giving out crack mm. prices part of a racial equity funding but whose fault is that yeah yeah. That's yeah. whoever wrote this shit and put it out there. Yeah. Don't even, yeah, don't even mention crack pipes. Just be like, hey, we're trying to make it safer for addicts. That's all you have to do. They call it smoking kit supply. Don't even say anything about it. We're trying to make things safer mm-hmm. for addicts. And then just put that, dude, I, my fear is that like a lot of this, a lot of this distraction is wrapped up into the Dems knowing that they're going to lose the midterms. And I think part of that is like the, the Rogan hit piece is baked into that as well. I just think that they haven't done anything. They haven't delivered on any of their promises. So the best that they can do right now is just distract. 
Shoot. give you other things to be upset about so we can't look at them and go, hey, why didn't you pass the George Floyd mm -hmm. Act? Why didn't you do the, what is the other one you were saying? Black voting. Well, I mean, voting rights. Yeah. For the voting thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're talking the about them losing thing. the midterms. Yeah. Y'all yeah. aren't even doing anything to protect our voting rights. The problem that we have, I think, as just like people in general, is we think that politicians will do anything for us. I don't think politicians will do anything but for us besides take more of our money. That's the only thing that I think that they're good, mm -hmm. good for, is just how can they find more ways where we can give them money that they can then waste? We have to take care of ourselves. And by by that, I mean literally organize. If we're poor, we have to organize so many people that we combined are rich. And uh, and that's essentially what unions are, right? Like a union has a lot of power because it's a bunch of poor people together going, yo, you think you have all the power as a billionaire? Well, all of us together, we're worth a billion. Now yes. we can play ball. Or we got to get rich people to side with our problems and then the rich people put pressure on the powers that be, et cetera, do it. But politicians will do nothing for us. We do the thing and then they accommodate that thing because they want to win us over. Simple you think, as that. You think we can push them? I think we can push them. Hell I think, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think money pushes them. Right. And it's I not think even push them. The right it's, it's like we have to show them that this is what we want and if they don't give it to us, we'll go to someone else. And that's always going to be the biggest issue for black people is that like, if you guys vote Republican, if you, yeah. black people voted Republican once, you'd have whatever you want every election because both sides would be fighting for it, right? But the fact that Democrats know all they have to do is go, yo, you're a, you're a sellout. I mean, that's literally what yo, Biden it, literally said to you. Hey, what do you mean? You won't vote for me? If what do you, you mean, sellout? That's right. <laughs> he that's just right. calls you a sellout. That's so right. it's like black people are so right. terrified to vote Republican because they feel like the whole community, oh, you're going to support those racist motherfuckers. And low key, that's also on conservatives. For allowing themselves to be placed and made look to look so radioactive. And there's a lot of rhetoric that they let be out there that is radioactive. So it's like you got to fight that tooth and nail as well. Because, and again, I'm not black, so I don't know. But from talking to a lot of my black friends, it's like black people are ready. They're ready for another they're opportunity. Ready. They're, they're ready, ready for not, another not, option. Not, right? not, let's say that. Let's say, yeah, say that. They're not ready to vote conservative. They're ready for another option. They're just ready yes. for another option. It's so it's like, yo, come, come show me something, bro. I think, I, you know what? You're, I, you're absolutely right. And I also think I see a lot of progressive white people like that too, though. A lot of progressive white people are like, that's why, that's why the Bernie Sanders of the world, you know what I mean? White people, make done noise. With these, white people are done with these Democrats, bro. Let me just tell you something. White people <laughs> you're speaking are speaking on behalf of all white people. I'm being, if you're a white person <laughs> that, that hasn't like dyed your hair pink, if you have your regular fucking hair color and you're a white person, you're done with these fucking Democrats. Bro. You're just done with it. Bro. You want something more progressive. Ooh, and that's interesting. Make that argument. I just think you want something more progressive. I think that's why the Bernie Sanders of the world was popular. Hey, yo, I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it's Well, no, it's not wow. mind boggling to me. In a perfect world, the last two presidential elections, another person could have snuck in and won this shit. But you yeah. know, the way the game is structured, it's either going to be a Democrat or Republican. They you don't stand a the, chance. They just put the bums in there that they can control. Like, yeah. there's not even that good. Like, you know, Pete Buttigieg or whatever like that. It's like, he's just someone that can be controlled. Like, I like Pete. Yeah, we like Pete. Yeah. And like, we're like, oh, I guess this is a progressive. This is a good guy, et cetera. We don't know anything about his foreign policy. We know nothing about Pete. And granted, we don't know nothing we know about most politicians. That's fine. But what I'm saying is they don't give us the best options, right? Yeah. I mean, like, and then when an option that's interesting to us comes along, they do everything they can to squash him. Please believe Republicans did not want Trump because they knew that they weren't going to be able to control that motherfucker. And they well, did that everything they could. the horse in their lead. Hey, yeah. and now, yo, that's the problem with Bernie. He wasn't as good. Now, also, the Democratic system is built to, like, control who is becoming president with yeah. the caucuses and shit, and they stole it from Bernie. But he also wasn't so good that he could beat the system that's in place. And... A lot of us wish that he would, because I'd rather that. Even if he did nothing, shake some fucking shit up, yo. I'm be honest with you. You know, I think we dropped the ball. Hillary, man. Hillary, what? Hillary should have been president. Oh God. I think Hillary would have been oh, president. Oh God. Why? I mean, that better, Why? better than what we got going on now. Why? I think she'd have been. I think she'd have been a good president. If Hillary's president were, we'd be at war with ten different countries already, right? Well, now. that's coming. Yeah. Under whose administration? Keep it a buck. Under whose administration are yeah, we going to go to war? Yeah, but you know what? I, I, These Democrats talk all this shit all the time. I, oh, those right wing people are warmongers, et cetera. Hey, man. Is it all I, time? Think, I think Russia, yeah. Russia and China smell fear. Yeah. And if this was the 90s, I would have let another word fly just now. <laughs> G Unit had a dope freestyle about it. <laughs> All right. Okay. But I'm telling you, <laughs> Russia and China right now, they smell fear and they are ready to exploit the weakness of. Where do you think they go America. first? 
We need to get our swagger back, man. I don't they know go New York Jones. first. We need yo, to get Bishop, yo, when you got Bishop TDJ, Bishop, because I, I remember I, I posted this last week. I was just like, yo, we're not yeah. paying attention, right? And I was talking about the, you know, Russia and China alliance and just even looking at what's going on in the Ukraine. Like, you hear people like, oh, Putin, Putin, Putin's bluffing. Eh, 100,000 troops at the border, bro. I, eh, somebody yeah. might need to take that a little, mm. little bit more serious, right? Yeah. And so I posted, we're not paying attention. I'm watching Bishop T.D. Jakes on Sunday. He mm. gave a sermon mm. called, We Need an Epiphany. Mm. And Bishop T.D. Jakes literally started off by saying how we're not paying attention and we need an epiphany. And then he went into, we're on the brink of, he said, God told him, we're on the brink of World War III. And he starts talking Ooh. about Russia and China. And he was like, y'all worried about bombs. Mm. He's like, there ain't gonna be no bombs. Mm. He said, this shit is gonna be fought on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> he, and he, we're already seeing that. Yeah. The disinformation. Chris, please jump in right now because Chris be following all of this shit in a real way. And he put me on to something. Chris, I don't know if you want to talk about it though. I mean, you said it. I mean, I, I think, you know, we're talking about the Russians invading Ukraine. The Russians have already invaded the U.S. They just do it through social media. The, the, right. You know, the wars of the future aren't bombs and tanks. It's social media attacks. And we got to address that. That shit you talked about when you said... Uh, TikTok. Yeah, but remember you talked about Portnoy and, and whatever the, they was on there with a company that did whatever? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bro, that shit is real. And you can trace this shit back. And a lot of these bots come back from Russia. I've seen it myself. Yeah, they want us fighting. Like, nobody benefits more about, like, us destroying each other than China or that's Russia. Right. Yeah. Than that's our right. Enemies. So, that's they right. They want us fighting each other right. so that we don't fight them. I mean, that's, exactly. that's why I think America needs a real pride movement. Like, and I think what happened is, like, we had a moment looking in the mirror and nobody likes what they see in the mirror, right? Because the reflection, it, it forces you to look at all the horrible things that you've done, right? Yeah. And I think that what we need to do is kind of restructure American pride. Like, I, I love America, man. And Can you have American pride if all of us don't have it? Yo, I, and here's the thing. I think that American pride, the way that we have American pride, and this is one of my biggest frustrations with the left and the right, is the extreme left and the right have stolen everything I love about America from me, right? They bastardize it. So like Bring the left, down. the left has stolen tolerance. Okay. Like I was so proud, like growing up in New York and I have all these different friends from all these different walks of life and we all fucking tease, tease each other, bust balls, but like have respect for each other's cultures and like value it and get to like tap Whoa. into all these different experiences. It was so dope. Like I didn't even know other countries had my, like non-white people until like uh, recently. Me neither. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was like, I, nah, that's just us. And we, this is it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I love that. And then mm. the left went so extreme pandering with their like wokeness that it's like, now you make tolerance corny. And then the right goes so extreme with the other things I love about America, which is like uh, freedom of speech and like freedom in general and like pride. And it's like, they went so extreme with that shit. It's like, anytime I hear some dude say freedom of speech, I'm like, what do you want to say? Really? Like you, you went up. so fucking crazy with it that I can't even tell you how important it is with me wow. so y'all have stolen the things i love about america so much i wonder if um because you know i was thinking about this when, when, I, when i said what i said about hillary the reason i, I said that is because i feel like hillary would have kept things in the middle right because she's a centrist barack obama was a centrist right Barack was just a great he but, was just a great politician and like just such a, like an engaging likable smart person but how do you feel i want to ask you how do you feel yeah. america was under barack i can't say from a conservative side but like i I really enjoyed Barack, you know, as a president, because I just thought he was like a great um, ambassador for America. And like, that's what I think America's about. Like the guy mm -hmm. was just cool. Like I looked at the president. I was like, ah, I really liked that that guy is our president. Yeah. I like yeah. I, like I feel like if he sat down with any world leader, he could outsmart him. And I like that. You know, like Hillary would just fall apart, just crumble like I'm glad stinks. I'm like, glad Trump yeah. bodied her, bro. He did. I'm glad yeah. you said that, though. Yeah. And the reason I'm glad you said that is because. I don't think you can ever truly represent all of the different groups in America if you're part of any one party. Yeah. I think in order for in order for to get what you're saying we need, which is American pride, Bro. it has to be other options that aren't Democrat yeah, or that, Republican that aren't anything. Just like yeah. it gotta be like yes. a a, I don't know, centrist well, party. It's got to be somebody that's willing to listen to everyone Obama. and what everything's saying, yeah. everybody's yeah. saying, and be willing to like compromise with everybody in a way. Well, here, here's the thing about like what you said was really interesting about about like uh, even bringing up Barack, which I thought he did such a great job. Is like, I think that the most amazing thing about America, and I think Barack's a perfect example of this, but I think the most amazing thing about America is, and I think it's very important when we create this American pride movement that minorities are included in it and they get to take pride in America too because that's one of the saddest things that 
that I always hear. It's like when I talk to my friends that aren't white and they're like, they're like do you love America? Some of them love America. And then some are like, yeah. Michael Che has this great joke about it. He's like, black people are specific about our love. They're like, I don't know if I love America. I love Brooklyn. Yeah, you, because we don't have, we still yeah. have yet to feel like we get all the civil liberties and, and civil rights that this country says it's, yeah. gives they, America. They say, so it's like, we've been wrapping up what's great about America in these things that these groups have felt disenfranchised from, right? So of course they're not going to have their pride if, oh, I feel freedom. It's like, well, I don't feel free. And America would have to right some wrongs. 100%. Reparations would be a great step towards that. So, cool. so what I think we need to do is wrap wrap American pride into the thing that we all feel proud of. And I don't know if you guys feel proud about this, but like I do as a son of an immigrant, I definitely feel this way, but like America in the world is the place where you can become the greatest version of yourself. And I don't care who you are, what you look like. The greatest version of you, Charlemagne the God, can only be Charlemagne the God in America. I don't know if Charlemagne the God can be Charlemagne the God in London. Now I'm not taking anything away from you, but I'm giving some credit to fucking America. Not what like you what you, Lil Duval, Andrew Schultz, do you know what I mean? Wax, like everybody in this room can be the greatest for our shock. Bro, we'd be in jail in other countries. Say, we'll talk. Yeah. Like, what? I won't be. Yes, 100%. We so get to like, criticize our leaders. Fuck that. <laughs> You know what I mean? These jokes ain't flying everywhere, bro. Yeah, so it's nah, like, right. I look at that in America and I look at like what all my friends, like these creatives and entrepreneurs, my own parents, like my mom came from, you know, a, a place where she didn't think that her star could shine as bright and then came here and did all these amazing things, right? It's like mm -hmm. my dad literally walked into a fucking news station and this is a different time, but walking news station was like asking for a job and then ended up being a fucking reporter and then like produced news. Like these things happen here. Your fucking star shines bright. And like, that's the pride movement I want everybody to take part of. I want all these people who are like, yo, I came from nothing and then I became this amazing businessman, entertainer, fucking musician, athlete, whatever. Like, I yeah. want those stories. That is America to me and that's what America has always been. But no, you know that's who fucked that true. up? Who? White supremacists. Yeah. Racists and bigots fucked that up because that is the America we should live in. After that's the, the dream. But, 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 that's, but that's, that's the that, American dream. But that's not the America we live in. Yes, after a We're living in it right now. I'm sitting next to it. But yeah. that's what I'm saying. After but emancipation, now, it should have been that. It should have been like, and I, and I, and I after 9-11, it felt like New York was together. Mm. Like, literally. Yeah. Like, everybody was we together in New York. Yeah. Like, we knew, like, happened. man, there's something out here that wow. bigger than us that wants all of us gone, whatever, yeah. whatever. After emancipation, it should have been that way. Like, when you look at, um, and this is the chicken and watermelon stereotype, when you look at these people who started, black people, yeah. after they were enslaved, started growing watermelon and, you know, gaining financial freedom by yep. selling watermelon, yep. like, that should have been applauded. But you literally had racist bigots who saw them happy that mm -hmm. they were free mm -hmm. and happy that they were making money mm -hmm. and started bastardizing the watermelon and yep. calling them watermelon pickers and everything yep. else. That should have been applauded. Yeah, uh -huh. You know what I yeah. mean? And, and, and that's why I want people to identify the American dream as a pride source for us because I hope that you'll see, instead of like, you know, the redneck guy going, oh, they're these Mexicans or whatever are stealing all our jobs, or whatever. Like, Loki, I hope that they see an immigrant who has come here. And I don't want people to just come here illegally. I think there should be a legal way to do it, mm -hmm. right? I, I'm not just for like, yeah, let anybody come in. Like, we have to have fucking rules and shit too, right? If you value something, you value your country. You're not mm -hmm. going to just let any old person walk in whenever you want. Just By like the you way, value your house. Which both parties agree on. But, but I want this to yes. be the place for immigrants. Yes. I still want this to be like, yo, you want to run it up? You want to be the best version of yourself? Yo, come bring it, because that's what we're yeah. about. And then I want Americans, like, I want that fucking redneck dude to see that Mexican guy who came here legally, but he came here and started his own business and have his fucking restaurant. I want him to look at that and be like, yo, that's fire, because you could only do that here. And we built something where you could do that and then take personal pride yo, in everybody's ability to reach their highest goals here. I agree with everything you're just saying. I think that the problem is the fact that, man, everybody can't get money. Yeah. And not everybody's gonna. And but but that's the problem, right? If you're a white guy, yeah. right, who's been here, and this country has always told you white people get ahead, yada, yada, mm -hmm. and you watch somebody from another country, or you watch a black person, yeah, it's or hard, Latino person, you be like, man, fuck them, yeah. yeah, like I should be on, like literally, that's what it is. It all boils down to jealousy. It boils down Bro, to envy. It boils down the to hate. Are, that's that's why. That's why Europe is socialist. Is these people have been living there for so long? They're like, yo, I don't want to hustle no more. I just want a job that I know is gonna pay me enough to live, and I want some health care. So I'll be safe in case I get sick and I want to be taken care of when I'm old. I'm wow. tired of this hustle. Wow, what a life. But America, we're young still, right? We're like 400 fucking years old, right? So everybody that comes here is on their grind, right? They're basically, America's like moving to New York. 
Everybody who comes to America is like, I'm going to work 80 hours a week and I'm going to get myself out of fucking poverty and I'm going to go. But then you got generations of people who have been here for a while and they're like, yo, my family did all that work shit. Yeah, I just right. want a job I could trust. Yeah, I want a pension and I want my fucking health care and Chill. I want to chill with my family. And that's okay too. And we might evolve one day into a more socialist system that will basically restrict how high we go on the top, yeah. but how low we go on the bottom. You think? I, I, I don't think, but that's why I'm not for evolution. Though. But that's why we work hard, though, so our younger ones wish. don't really have to. I mean, that's what I, I hope we continue to instill. Like, I hope every generation of American grows up going, nah, this is still the Hustle Olympics. Like, you got to go out there and you got to grind. You can't get the kids no more. You can't, you can't be giving us so much. We got so much. We got social media. We got Cash App. You know what I'm saying? That shit yeah. is so much but shit. But mutually assure our destruction. Nah, not necessarily. Well, social Where media we, might, but now, like, what I'm we. saying is we still invent everything. We still make all the cool shit. Like, nothing cool coming out of fucking China. China just takes whatever our shit is, deconstructs it, copies it, and makes it. Now, that's a lot. Say what? China making everything. Yeah. After we make it. We just say, go I make it. I don't know about that one. Uh, Name one thing. Listen, TikTok, you don't think TikTok is know, just you know, another you know, version you know, of social media? Yeah, app we yeah all this shit China, bro. Yeah. We exactly. design it. We innovate. Then we say, you put it together. Name one thing that they made. Everything. Everything. Fam, there's a difference between <laughs> sewing and designing. <laughs> yeah, but we design. Right here, we right innovate. Here is China. That was made China. Clear. China. I think all of that, everything you're saying sounds like a dream. We are in the dream, bro. And that's what it's called. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's why. And, and I want people to embrace dream. the American dream, man. Yeah. It, it's like really important to me. And maybe I'm lucky because I saw my mom go through it, right? Like I saw yeah. her come here and see this opportunity and then seize it and fucking run with it. And you guys have done this. Like, it's insane what we've all done. Like, if you really sit down here and go, what the fuck is yeah, going on? Truth be told, though, and, and if we, people always say this argument, and you know, they'd be like, oh, but you know, you're, you're not the, you're the exception, not the rule. That's true for all of us. Yo, let's yes. look. It's the one percent for a reason. Look at yourself as the like, exception. Every morning you are the all, fucking exception. That's right. Yeah, black people are the exception. Well, everybody's the you're all the exception. If you're super rich and wealthy in this country, like yes. you're the exception. Like yes. there's way more people doing bad than it is doing good. And it should not they're be that stores. way in a yes. country with this many resources. Yeah. And that is frustrating. Don't get me wrong. And like you see this immense wealth. You see these billionaires that are going to the moon and then the people living in tents, and you're like, do we need to go to the moon or should we figure out this whole tent situation? And that's 100 percent right. And low key, maybe if oh. we had a little bit more pride in America, I think like when you think America is shit and you see people living in tents, you go, yeah. well, yeah, we're shit. They should live in tents. But when you fucking have pride, when you really believe in your country, you, care. you go, ain't no fucking American living in a goddamn tent. OK, not while I'm Especially alive. Especially if they port for us. Especially right. You're Especially like, if they this is, for us. This I hate is that wrong. Yeah, it's hey, you know up. what, though, to your point about pride. It's just that that kind of goes back to what Whoopi was saying about humanity. Mm. If all of us were just good humans, like you don't even have to have American pride if you really just care about your fellow man. Let's start at American. Let's start at American. <laughs> let's start at America. Cause but you're right, though. We, one nation, yo, listen, one nation could hey, change everything. That's it. We yeah. said we did change everything. We I'm hearing about what's going world. on in Singapore. And I'm like, I gotta go see Singapore. There we go. People are talking about Singapore like it's Wakanda. It is Asian Wakanda. That's what I'm hearing. It is I want to go visit people. Like, I, I want to go see what's popping in Singapore. It's, it's fascinating. That, Incredibly clean. Have you been yet? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I did shows Where'd that. you go? Arkash and I went there. We went to Malaysia and Singapore. I'm a little Get bit... Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What did they do? Yeah. We went... Uh, I mean, this is uh, yeah a few years back, but it was it was an interesting experience. It's like an Apple store. Like, the place... That's what just, they said. The whole place. They said it's yeah. even under a dome. There's different parts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, it's just a fascinating place. But, like, for me, I like Malaysia a little bit more. I, I'm built for... She used to dance in Houston, right? <laughs> she used to dance. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I'm lost. <laughs> that the country Malaysia. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where she got her hair from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, exactly. but like I, I like. I like the third world a little bit more. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I, my energy is built for that. Like, and I think that's what America kind of has. Like, America is the first world. It's got the security and safety, mm -hmm. but it's still got like. The scammers, the hustlers, like, right. think about a crazy idea. You can make it happen here. Uh -huh. Whereas, like, you look at, like, parts of Europe and, like, Singapore and that kind of shit, like, where they have a little bit more structured society, it's hard to break the rules. There's a lot more, like, red tape and, like, bureaucracy that you got to deal with. Uh -huh. Whereas in America, it's just like, ain't no rule yet. Like, <laughs> how, right? Like, how many fucking, how many, like, random, random, like, um, exercise uh, powders and shit do they sell? And they're like, not FDA approved yet. And it's like, yeah. well, how the fuck are you selling it? Yeah. You're trying you know, it out. You're elaborate. Literally. 
Yeah. And I kind of like that environment, so I preferred Malaysia to Singapore. But but yeah, check it out. Is that a lot yeah, of technology over there. Yeah, it's just like it's a nation state, so it's very small, small amount of people, and and they can control everything, and they have like, it's you know it's one party, and but it's basically a benevolent dictatorship. So like, what happens if you had a dictator, but they tried to make a society that was really good for the people instead of just being insane assholes? What if you had that? What if yeah, you had? What I if wish that was how it, it works. Was. What if in America there was one person? And we knew he was this person, this woman, man. Was a great human. Yeah, he was. He was a great human. He cared about all, yeah. of, about Obama. everybody. I don't know if that was. I'll, Obama. I'll but tell would you. Would you let? Would you let? Would you let that person? I'll just tell run you. Everything? I'll tell you why that usually doesn't happen. Because the uh, disposition in a human being to crave power is uh, usually the not not matched with the disposition disposition in a human being to be benevolent or kind. Yeah, like wanting power at all costs means that you don't actually care about all those others. Like, and that's what's so rare, to be honest. And I put you in this category, like Joe in this category. It's like you guys are people that want. I don't know. If, I don't want to say want success, but you guys are people who are immensely successful, but you still want to see other people shine. That's and the, that's, that's the way, son. That's this is very rare, dude. This is very rare that people want to be successful and great, and then want to see other people be great. That that usually does not happen. And that's why you have so many people that are in those positions. They're just kind of like selfish and like belittle other people. They they become the old hater archetype, yeah, right? Like me. they're not ready to see the next generation thrive. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like you look at a lot of people that I tell people all the time, like, first time I saw Jesus Romero outside of Twitter was on Charlemagne show. Yeah. I, that's, uh -huh. that's Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. me, you threw a lot of alley oops. Like Charlie's footprint on the people who are impactful in the game right now. It's, it's, it's hard to deny. And the same thing with Joe. Like, you can't look at motherfuckers succeeding in stand-up right now. Right. So it's like, you guys have, you guys have incredible drive for success, but you also have a lot of joy in seeing people win. That's rare, bro. I love it. I like throwing more assists than I do score But points. you know that there are people hating on you on the come up. Why? They could have just thrown that lob. They could have been part of your success, right? They could have done songs with you. One thing that Drake does so well is that motherfucker does songs with all these new people that we don't even know about just yet. Yeah. So he throws them in the alley -oop, and then they all grow together instead of just being like, man, this new artist is trash. Fuck all this. Why we got to do it like that? I'm just Never still watched. having fun. I'm just out here, yeah, baby. Bless. Yeah. We just having, having fun. Bless. Let's pay some bills, do some masquerades, man. Uh, Squarespace. Salute to Squarespace for sponsoring the Brilliant Idiots, man. Um, domains, websites, online stores, marketing tools. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. You'll find what you need, whether you're showcasing your work, blogging and publishing content, selling products and services, announcing upcoming events, or anything you can dream of. Buying a domain from Squarespace is easy because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. And get to know your audience with their analytics tools. Those include insight on page views, traffic sources, time on site, audience geography, and more. It's also simple too. start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. All websites are optimized for mobile. Your site looks great on any device. Every Squarespace website and online store comes with a suite of integrated features and useful guides that help maximize prominence among search results. These SEO tools are paramount. Head to squarespace.com right now slash idiot. For a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash IDIOT with offer code IDIOT for 10% off your first purchase. Let's get back to the show. Let's do some asking idiots, Wait, Taylor. Hold on, you didn't, did you go over Euphoria and Zendaya and that? No? That means Zendaya is amazing. Zendaya is incredible. Zendaya should motherfucking win every goddamn award they give out for acting. And Zendaya is a great role model. For, for young black women. Absolutely. My daughter's 13 years old. My daughter literally, yesterday, literally said to me, you know who you should interview? I said, who? She said, Zendaya. Wow. Yeah. And I started to say, no shit, squirt. But I was like, <laughs> I said, yeah, that would be a good interview. And, and, and she was like, and when you do, I want to meet her. She's never yeah. said that to me about anybody. Now, explain, like, the cultural effect of euphoria. Because I hear everybody hey. talking about it. It, it seems to be... Crossing through all cultures, a little bit younger generation is into it, but it feels like their show. I mean, it's giving us the classic things that we all love. It's okay, reality. It's drugs. Okay. It's sex. Yes. And it's violence. Wow. That's America. Got it. 
<laughs> At least we got right. something to be proud of. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm just saying, it's giving us everything that we love. It's giving us sex. It's giving us drugs. It's giving us motherfucking violence. Our high schools mean? are so lit. Like, dude, high school everywhere else is so boring, huh? Yes. I don't know one like high school show from France or some other fucking place. Uh, and American said, high school, dude. Yeah, and I, said, <laughs> and, I and I said this. Uh, I was saying this. I was. I said, yo, man, this show is giving us all of this but it's giving it to us with a message. That's what we love. Mm. We love edginess with a motherfucking message. Mm. If you're edgy and you're entertaining us and you're giving a message, you'll win every motherfucking time. What's the message? The message is just, man, I like the way they address addiction. Like, huh. put it like this. Everybody on there has an issue, right? Yep. Like, whether it's the father who was bisexual, body. you know, and, and sleeps with... Trans, transgender, well, he slept with a transgender. I don't know if that's his thing, but he slept with a transgender. I know he's bisexual. Or Zendaya and her addiction, or, you know... Um, body form, what's that thing called? Body dysmorphia. Body dysmorphia. Yeah. You know, fat, uh, fit, uh, uh, what's his name? Fez? Fence. Yeah. Fence, and why he's so violent, and how he got to the drug game. They show you all of their origins, and they yeah. show you the trauma that led to them mm. they are getting to where them. they are. Mm. Zendaya, we know that her father died, you know what I'm saying? And she'd been dealing with the grief of her father. Like, this yeah. shit is just... It's not just mindless. That's why I didn't understand when Dare came at them because I'm like, yo, Dare, y'all don't watch this show. Who, who, who? Dare. Dare. The drug. The drug and alcohol oh. or whatever. Oh, I thought it's you said Dare. And I was like, is this another, <laughs> another one? <laughs> Jeez, another one. How many? The show is great. I let my daughter, like, I'm, I'm, I told my daughter, yo, you need to start watching this show. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, I she's thought you were scared of her to watch it. Uh, I mean, it's, I, think it's, I think the message in it is so good and it really does scare people it's from drugs. That's it. Yeah. When they say that you, they glorify drug use, yeah. there's nothing. I ain't doing nothing. this shit. Yeah. 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 Last weekend was ridiculous. Thank God for the Last word. weekend. Yo. Don't tell me. I'm going to watch. Yo, Rue learned everything from Spider-Man, bro. Yeah. That's all I'm going to fucking tell you, bro. <laughs> Rue was running through that neighborhood like she was the friendly neighborhood <laughs> Spider-Man, bro. That shit was incredible. <laughs> She was going through withdrawal. That was her superpower, she bro. She got rid of four she, cops. My God. She was scaling walls, dodging yeah. cars. Like, I was she's like, yo, she's Spider-Man. She got everything except for the fucking web shooting out of her wrist, man. <laughs> Zendaya should win in a war, but I don't know what the fuck. Is that an Emmy? I don't know what the fuck. She, she, she needs to win an Oscar. Fuck the... I know it's well, not a it's, movie, it's, but she needs to win an Oscar. Well, that's not... I'm just saying. Not I'm just I don't saying. even know what to say right now. <laughs> That's not, Alex, that's put the camera that's on that's me. Possible too. Brilliant I'm idiots, listeners saying, and watchers. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yo, Tom for Brady's so said. good. He should win the NBA <laughs> yeah, championship. Yo, he really is. He bro. really should. He should too. Honestly, how did, how did Tom Brady not win the MVP in the NBA? <laughs> I, they should make him president of China. <laughs> I, yo, why not? Tom Brady good. should be president of China. Why not? Real the exaggeration is real. She's a great actress. Yeah, but but the Oscar isn't any better than the Emmy. That's right. They're just for different things. That's Emmys it. are for TV shows and Oscars, Oscars are for movies. movies. So like, I if, want her to win both. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All, right. All right. So listen, whoever... And the album. I don't care. Who, whoever wins the Super Bowl this year should win the NBA Finals too. Yeah, you yeah. got to give them both trophies, bro. I think that we should. I, hey. 100%. Look, my exaggeration is showing how much I enjoy her, her work. Yeah. Um, Should she win a Grammy too? Yeah. yeah. You yes. gotta give her a Grammy. Yeah, she yeah, sings. Yeah, yeah. No, no, she does sing on there though. What does she say? She has a track. Uh, I don't know what the song's called, but I know she, she wasn't singing. She does. No, she don't. Yeah, she does. The last season she had that was her song. What song? Near the end of the um show. How does it go? She was like, people she thought she was dying. She was rapping Tupac or something. No, <laughs> she, that I'm was her song. All right, now I gotta look it up. Can we do some masking idiots? I'm a liar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but she does, she does <laughs> think yeah. Yeah. Just, just to the asking right, idiots, sorry, my darling. I'm not sure you have a song. <laughs> Why are we gonna be sorry? Because <laughs> that's a salty. Um, <laughs> wait, before that, did you guys, I wanna know your take on T.I., on stand up, I think that um, I think that uh, listen, I like when everybody tries stand up. To be totally honest, no, with you me. don't. I'm scared. No, I'm not, I'm not like those because stand up is so hard. I wish everybody did it because then they'd have respect for it. That's yeah. right. So like, I, I, I tried it. I sat my ass down. It, see, I so you respect it, it, right? That's right. That shit is. Yeah. Not I'm scared joke. to even try. That's how much I respect. That's the thing. Okay. So it's like there yeah. are people. Every what's that? All for us. Taylor, 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 Taylor. It's all good. It is her. Oh, we believe you. We believe you. We believe oh, we're you. moving on. We believe everything you say, Taylor. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I need Sorry. to hear. Um, I think Ty, I think Ti is just trying to figure out what the next thing he's going to do in his life. Because don't nobody want to see him in a verses. That's why. Oh. That's why everybody shook to death 
to see Tip in a versus because you know he'll body 95% of y'all. So now he got to go out there and do stand up. Yup. <laughs> That's what this is all about. Yup. But, you know, do you, you are you going to be upset when he. Well, no, you don't care. You're doing Venus. It'll, That's be, the thing, like, it'll be the other comedians who'll be mad. The guys who can't sell out comedy clubs. Yeah. The T.I. can go anywhere right now and get 70 to, 70 to 100,000 at a comedy yeah, club. Like, I, I think he'll do, he'll do fine and he'll figure it out. I just think it's, I think it's really hard to be a creative person your whole life. And then people go, all right, you don't need to make music anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, we're done buying your music or listening to your new music. I think it's really hard to just turn off that creative muscle. So well, I think for him to go, okay, let me work towards something with stand-up. Let me work towards something different. I think that makes sense for me as a creative. And I think that's the great thing about stand-up is like, you can do this shit until you're, you know, Don, what is it? Don Rickles is fucking yeah. almost a hundred years old. So it's, like, it's good to reinvent yourself and change the product. Yeah. Um, just keep it? being creative, man. Right. Like, and if you don't want T.I. to do stand-up, then you have to tell him that I bet you can't quit doing stand-up. Whatever you tell T.I. he can't do, <laughs> tip, Tip's going to do. Yeah. So if you want him to quit, you say, "Hey, I bet you can't quit stand up." Yeah, and then, love and, it so and then much. <laughs> what I would tell, what I would tell Tip is that you got to stop letting people videotape you. Yeah, him working out because it's like one, mm, one, you're, out. you're. These aren't the best versions of your jokes. Two, you can't even work out the jokes if everybody's seen them. That's right. So it's like give yourself some time right. to grow the material. That's Don't, right. They're, they they want to post you the second they see you. They gotta post you. Why hasn't Duval told him this? Uh, mm. Maybe he has. You want him to lose? I'm, listen, I'm in, listen, man. Either you can't lose with me because I like when you're good. I like when you're funny, and I like when you bump. Yeah. Oh, so it, either way, I'm dying laughing. You can't you funny, lose. You're right. Yeah. If you're funny, you actually more funnier when That's you right. lose. That's right. I I'm, I told y'all this before. When I go to stand up <laughs> shows, I'm either really intently listening, yeah. and I'm like, oh shit, that was so smart. Uh, or if it's really, really super funny, I'm I'm like, oh shit, but I'm gonna laugh, but I never try to laugh too hard because I I know. That sometimes it's something else after it. Yeah. But if you're bombing, I, if I'm the only person in the it club is. laughing, I promise you you're bombing. <laughs> and I love it. I, I love, love it too. I, I love, love it. Too. like, ha! It's, ha, it's, ha, it's ha, so ha, <laughs> 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 People be looking at me like that must be Charlemagne's cousin or something. That must, be, that must be Charlemagne's friend or something, yo. I'm like, no, nope. I just like, yeah, I like seeing people too. bombing. Like that one person. That white girl. Oh my god, who was doing the impress impersonations? Oh, that shit was so funny, oh, man. Y'all haven't seen the funniest one. Yeah. No, this was on. We was at the oh, show. Yeah. She Which when one? I said she was up there losing. I was there. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah. I don't remember her name. I her name. She when I yo show when I say she was up there losing, bro. <laughs> she must have been that bad. Ooh, hold on. Y'all seen this? Ooh. Watch this one. This is a oh, I did see this. I see this one. Oh yeah, it's gonna bring her up. Booster. Oh, Heather McDowell. You want me to put it? I'll just put it back up. <laughs> Double vaxxed, booster, Double -vaxed, flu, booster shot, flu shot, and anything. I'm going to be honest, I have the shingle shot too. Shingle, shingle. Yes. And I still get my period. What? Yes. Wow. Traveled, went to Mexico twice, did shows, meet and greets, never got COVID. Clearly. Jesus loves me the most. Seriously. So nice. So nice. Uh, what? Why are y'all laughing, out? though? She passed out. Yo, you hear the dude okay. laughing? No, the man. They thought that it was a, a bit. joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, man. The audience. No. I thought she said she fractured her skull. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know she, she fractured her skull. Yeah. But like, yeah. they, of course, up. thought it was a joke because she's talking about, oh, I got all these vaccines, et cetera. And then you pass yeah. out. That seems like you gotta a kind of stupid knees, joke. Man. You yeah. got to bend your knees. Her shit locked. And then, wow. <laughs> you, heard that, you heard that shit. I've never seen somebody fall so hard when they, they, they were already so close. on the fucking stage. Oh, have yeah. mercy. Give me, uh, give me some ass. Let's do a couple ass games and get out of here. I got to get out of here to 130. What we got? What we got? Ah, uh, does full in? Oh, this is a good one. Does full independence kill censorship? That's by by C U Art. No, it does not. Because as I always tell y'all, you can say whatever you want, but and you can have all the free speech you want, but you're not free 
of the consequences of said speech are the reactions of said speech. There is always going to be this. Like, there's always going to be outrage. There's always going to be noise. So full independence does not kill censorship. There's always going to be somebody calling for you to be silenced in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. Uh, it, it, um, independence helps because it puts pressure on industry to make their rules malleable so they can compete with you. That's right. So that's why independence, I think, is, is very good. But like Charlamagne said, like, there's always going to be people trying to silence you because they disagree yeah. with your views. So, or they just don't like how powerful or influential, influential you are. So, that's the funny thing about Rogan, right? It's like, okay, let's just say, hypothetically, which won't happen, Spotify removes Rogan. Yeah, not happening. They still got to cash him out. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he'll just go back to doing his podcast the way he was. Or get another crazy anyway. bag somewhere else. Like, mm-hmm. If he even wants to. It's like, yeah. you go back, you go, you're already, he's in Austin. That's his studio, guys, yeah. that he had before this. Like, it's just like, yeah. he'll just go back to doing what he was doing. It's also, like, this is just so successful. I mean, it's just the best possible thing for the podcast. Like, everybody's going to listen to it. We were all joking around with Akash. We are like, how does it feel to be on, like, potentially the most listened to Rogan episode ever? Listen, like the one that on. he came back on, wow. Akash was just on Rogan for anybody. I saw was, uh, I didn't see it, but I saw it on. But like, you definitely see it now. Li- literally, it's like the episode where he's going to come back and then talk about what had happened to yeah. him. It just happens to be the one we played a clip this morning on Breakfast. Club there we go with Akash yeah. talking. Let's yeah. go. And I said Fire. that annoying voice you hear talking with Rogan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Akash. It's, a, it's a Kosh thing. Akash. You know, but it's just like, yeah. I mean, I just don't. I I, I don't I don't know, man. Um, which some still, I'm not even getting into that. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, What's the best Super age Bowl to get prediction? married as a man? Yeah, that's a good one. Mm. That's a good one. 38. <laughs> <laughs> I got married at what, 20? I got married at I'm 38. 16? Oh, I think I say 20. So eight years ago? How old was I? 38. 43 now. What's 43 minus eight? I don't fucking know. Yeah, I'm married in my third. You get married when you want to get married, man. You get married whatever age you want to get married, man. Yeah. I after say, 20s. Um, after 20s? After the 20s. You're not a man. Nah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying. Nah, the question I think, is, what's the best well, age to get married for a man? Why can I answer? I, I don't think I don't oh, think it, I don't wow. think it should be I don't think it should be an age. <laughs> Yo, this girl's crazy, bro. Yeah. Yo, this girl is absolutely <laughs> crazy. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's an age. unbelievable. I think Zendaya should get a Michelin star for her <laughs> performance <laughs> on Euphoria. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's supposed to be an age. I think uh, you get married when you feel like um, I will leave you for the last two years of my meat. Like you feel like you got oh. la- two years left for your meat being good, mm. then you do it. No. You play, I'm gonna give her the last of it before it start having problems with your surgery. So yeah, but well, she definitely gonna fuck a younger man. I mean, that's what happened. So that's that's why you need to give her the last. He's gonna two. be a younger man with thick eyebrows, young, thick Dominican, thick Dominican with thick eyebrows. <laughs> Probably, I don't care. Yes, you do. I mean, yeah, you would to care do? if you know something's gonna come. You have to get his heart broken. I know, but why you want <laughs> this so bad? Hey, <laughs> back. Hey, I, so I really did. Breaking hearts. That's reparations. Break I just gotta see it one time. <laughs> reparations. Before I die at the tender <laughs> age of a hundred. I got to see Wax get his heart broke. You're going to get Listen, your heart you don't broke, even know bro. if I get you my heart broke all the time. Heart... I get my heart broke all the time. Nah. No, you don't. What you mean? What you want? No, no, I'm not going to lie. Shorty did break your heart. Who? Oh, Who? Shorty did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you was out there getting your Kanye on, bro. It's all good. It's supposed to happen. It's going to happen. It's only did it grow me. What happened? What I, don't do? Do, I really don't know what happened, but I'll take it. Because if it already happened, that means my karma already gone. So thank you. Nah, you was in love. You was in love. It's okay. That's okay. That's crazy. I think we've did. Okay. We've, we've done it here, guys. <laughs> Take it. We've done it, right? <laughs> Wait, yes, sir. One on Do you guys have a uh, Super Bowl prediction? Defense wins Dallas championships. Win Super Bowl. Yeah, defense wins <laughs> championships. <laughs> Offense wins. Um, pays. I uh, get the ticket. So I look at the the uh, Rams. Defense wins championships. Offense sell tickets. Okay. So I think the Bengals got better offense. They're going to lose, and defense. Is going to win with the Bengals. I mean, with the uh, Rams. Rams. Yes. I bet on Joe Burrows. I don't even know what that the fuck his name is. That Yo. motherfucker's bad. That motherfucker got magic with him. Okay. He's That's the Bengal guy? Yes. 
That guy's different. He's been different since but, college. Um, yes, I do believe defense wins championships, but defense wins championships. Ah, them Bengals look like a team of destiny, bro. Mm. Nah, that jo- that jo- if they that- get past if they could get past Donald and and Miller and all them over there, it's a little different, man. But don't listen to me. I'm a Cowboy fan. Me too. Yeah. So what the fuck do I know? Okay. I just know what defense does. Uh, you, you got a prediction for the Super Bowl? Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't care. <laughs> I, I genuinely do not care about it. I'm with you. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm with you. Fuck who. Looking forward to the halftime show, though. Yeah. 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 Really looking forward to the halftime. I hope they take it there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I hope nobody trip. I hope they don't do the cute shit. I hope they come out there and give us those 90s problematic nice. rap tunes. Probably They're not going to happen. They're going to be scared, too. Why would, they, why would they be scared? Because of what's going on in the world right now. Nah, they're not scared. Those three ain't scared. Huh? Those three not scared. The independence. Yeah, Snoop Dogg could do anything. Those, those, those Who? three not scared. Snoop Dogg. We'll see, though. Snoop Dogg really can't do anything. <laughs> we'll see. God bless Snoop Dogg. Man. Sinbad. As always, if you listen... <laughs> 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 As always... That's it, right there. That's it. Done. That's it. Done. <laughs> yeah, we don't even need to go. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs>